Hi, welcome. It's, uh, oh gosh, what day is it? Good Lord. 17th. Thank you. September 17th, the planning board, um, and we're going to open with um, a small discussion on a hearing that we had um, a couple of weeks ago. It's uh, a stone wall repair at 120 Pond Street, and at 745, we'll have our first public hearing, uh, continued public hearing for 90 Hayden Row Street. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the first order of business tonight is a compliance review of 120 Pond Street. Uh, Mr. Vincent Duramo, I might be saying it wrong. I'm not sure if he's here or not. No, so we were just no. kind of the board. Just discuss here? Kind of discuss this and so All right, perfect. So uh, board members, um, back on June 11th, we actually approved the stone wall repair. If you remember, there was uh, uh, a stone wall that was damaged due to an auto uh, hitting the wall. Uh, the applicant at that time came in, spoke about how he was going to make the repairs, and the, the crux of it is that we wanted those repairs to the stone wall to be consistent with the existing snow wall that was in place, that's been in place for a long time. Uh, it's come to the attention of the board that the subsequent repairs are not quite consistent, at least uh, the way that I looked at some of the pictures and I looked at the past notes, uh, to what I think the original intent of the board was. Uh, so I'd ask you maybe if you have looked at the pictures or could go to the pictures, I think that's page 13. Um, you can see a series of three or four pictures where the repairs seem to be inconsistent or incongruent with the existing stone wall. Um, I wanted to bring it to the board's attention um, and discuss what potential actions that we should take uh, to bring the applicant back in and or to modify the repairs that he has made in such a way that it is more consistent with the existing stone wall. So I'll pause there, uh, you know, entertain any questions or if members of the board have comment, uh, it's kind of an open discussion for the next 10 or 15 minutes or so to, uh, to figure out how we want to, want to proceed. So, Amy? Just to ask a clarifying question um, for the public's benefit. So what is the process when after we approve the scenic road um, stone wall removal and replacement. Um, what is the procedure after that? Is, does the town inspector come and look at the work when it's done? It's a good question. Um, I don't know, and George, you might have some insight. I don't know if he goes out to every project upon completion or if it's only warranted or generated if an individual has a complaint or raises the issue back with the town or back with the board that the work that's being done is not in line with what was actually approved by the board. I would agree on the latter. So even in the bylaw and just the general process in the past, there's no kind of follow-up as their inspection. Um, so once the permit is issued, the applicant takes it and they're free to do the work as they as it's approved. But like you had suggested, if there's air um, issues, that's when the staff will go out. Um, so if there's really no monitoring process after that. Yeah. So one of the things we probably want to talk about is how we maybe um, build some specificity into our decisions. Because um, we had a pretty rich conversation with this, this applicant and okay. we had um, a pretty, I think we all had a, I thought we had a pretty solid idea of what the plan was. We even asked the question about how, or somebody did, I think you did Gary, how to marry the old stone wall with the new one. Um, so we probably need to develop a process, I think, um, more than there is one existing that we've relied on. Yeah. Or even, just to piggyback on the chairperson's comment, Adam Chairwoman's comment, around a criteria, right? So I think we had a vision of a stone wall that is consistent with the existing stone wall, but my vision or our vision of what that looked like may not be consistent with what the applicant and it clearly look at some of the pictures, he's kind of taken in a little bit different direction. So maybe if there's things like this that we create a set of criteria where there's ambiguity, it may minimize or reduce you know, things like this that come in front of the board. So, so just my, my thought on this, and um, 
I'm, I'm wondering if it's worth kind of separating this into to two different issues. Um, one being this specific incident, mm. um, and then two being moving forward, what else can we do to, to ensure some compliance um, for these scenic walls? Um, you know, I've driven by it, I've been by it a few times, and, and I, I also remember that conversation, and, and you know, I guess I struggle in a couple of ways. One, make comments to maintaining the rural feel of it, if you look at how it is now, it definitely does not have that rural feel. And two, and I'm, I'm not a stone expert, but it doesn't look like it's all original stone. And he specifically mm -hmm. said they were only going to reuse the existing stone. So to me, there's potentially two pretty clear uh, uh, differences between what uh, they had proposed and, and committed to do versus what's actually being, being done. That's just, just my take on it. I don't know what our options are here with this specific incident. Um, it feels like it's probably, I mean, I don't know if we can have them come back in for a conversation. Or, I, I don't, I'm not really sure, but I, I feel like we, we owe it to, to talk to them. one of those, the iPads. I'm sorry, I'm interrupting you, I apologize. Can somebody pass an iPad down? No, I, I think it's important to call out what we're talking about. We're, we're talking around it, but we haven't talked about the specifics. Are we talking about the lower level with the bright gray stones is that oh, I mean, no. how many different sections are we talking about no I, uh, yeah what was approved was um we had approved um, a structure well i'm going to use these definitions because i think as far as um describing what we have and where we want it to be so there's something called an engineered stone and so we did talk an engineered stone is what's can we flip that so that as I'm talking? I'm on page 12. Can we flip the screen? Yes, right there. Yep, that one. Yep. That that's what's called an engineered stone, and I'm sure that that gray. At the bottom, right? At the yeah. bottom. Yeah, that's what I was referring to. Be covered to. with soil. Right. So right. I, I found nothing wrong with that and, and that's from our his, conversation. And that's on his property. And that's yeah. on his property, and right. we talked about how that was okay. Where it's a problem is the next one is the one you're on. The one we were on, yeah. This one? Yeah, that yes. one. Yeah. Um, and then if you flip um, to. Oh, where is Be before you the flip, one? can we okay. just talk to it yeah. specifically? Yeah. I, I mean, that does not look. Bad to me. Am I missing something? It, it looks nice, but it's engineered. It's not rural. So if we flip to then, you can I speak to that as well, just briefly? Sure. And and I see a difference in color. Um, I see some red stones in there that are not visible on the previous picture of, of the you know the stones that were there before they started rebuilding. Um, so that's part of it as well. And part of it is just that it looks super square and very. So I guess my question is, if we flip to 14, which is, right, I'm not by the um, it's, not, it's not the same number, um, right the one with three, yeah, that's the one that we spoke on in great length about that's not completed yet. So I also had a question, so who, when were these pictures taken and what was there an action given because depending on the number of days between our discussion and the wall was there a halt put on this so to, to my knowledge there's been no halt put on it uh, when these pictures were taken I took these last week probably last Thursday uh, but this picture wasn't last week this picture no, was this, original. these pictures were submitted with the application oh so these okay. would be these are the application photos so how far have they gotten the, uh, the, the now photo <laughs> Um, um, we're trying to decide. I, I guess I need to. So, that one, that's mm -hmm. one. That's new. And then the and one before that is new. And the one before it? Yep. So, I just, so, so both no sides have been brought out flush. My sense is that it's, all, it's done. It's done. Okay. It's not done yet. Well, is it pretty close to done? I, I, I didn't drive by, but Georgia did it. I, there are still people out there working, but looking, it looks like they have the top layer complete. So I, I can't imagine how much is left to do. I mean, that's amazing. I don't know, but it seems yeah. complete. It's very different. So I think the discussion, I think there's two parts to it. One is this particular incident, is there any remediation or do we want to kind of 
bring the applicant back for some type of remediation. And I think the other part to, to Gary's point is identifying and maybe putting together some type of compliance criteria. So when mm -hmm. these type of scenarios come before the board, mm -hmm. it's not just, hey, yeah, we'll keep with the spirit and the intent of what the original was, but it's no, you'll adhere to these particular criteria so that we have a level of confidence that what's actually being constructed or reconstructed is truly not only in line with the intent, but in line with the criteria and guidelines that we put forth. Um, so, George, I, I'm not sure if, you know, if we bring the applicant back in, right, what are we going to do, make them tear it down and, and reconstruct it, I guess? Yeah, it's a matter of, I mean, a matter of meeting of the minds and what corrective action the board could recommend. I mean, it's really up to the board. <coughs> I, I, I'd, I'd like to have them come back in and, and explain the differences between them, and I'd like to, to hear from them. And, and David, just going back to your point, it's not that it's necessarily ugly, it's that that's not what they said they were going to do. Right, right. So to me, there's yep. a, a principle here, but I'd like to bring them in and, and have them explain and say, look, this is what you explained to us, and this is what it is now. Please help us understand the, the, the differences here. And why. And, then, and, and why, and, and, then, and then we go from there. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't have any issue or concern with bringing the applicant back in. Amy? I think it's okay to bring them back, especially, I think they need to tell their story. I, I drove by it also, and I couldn't tell for sure that they were not all old stones just put together really neatly. Just, there's no mortar in there or anything. It, 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 a stone just put together in a, you know, a really artful. To be able to do that. Really artful presentation, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. the original stone walls, you know, we're stuck together all neat and tight, and then they just eventually over oh, time yeah. fell down, so it's, it's hard to reproduce the falling apart look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I beg to differ on that. I, um, I'm doing quite a bit of stone work myself. Um, well, not my personal self, but on, on a property. And um, we have to buy specialty stone. In order to get that kind of flat, finished mm -hmm. look, you buy them, you know, in these large oh. pallets. Okay. And you know, um, by the yard. I mean, that's probably pretty expensive stone. So it's it's not that he hasn't you know put out the effort to do a quality project. Um, I think that would be you know where we would have what well, we would have to decide what the repercussions were. Um, and and I'm not sure what's open to us. Right. Uh, Frank, I mean, historically, you were asked uh, a question similar to this. There was a neighbor that had a fence of fence of rock wall that was very well maintained and structured in order. And someone asked, well, how do we make ours look like that? And there really is no answer according to, to the bylaw. Um, I kind of side with David's view where it looks like they're going along with the spirit of what our intentions were. But to answer, I think, the question that's being asked, how far astray are they and when, when they're done you can compare the plans they put in to us ask permission for the scenic roadway changes and if they're that far afield then they would be in line for a, a fine or remediation of some sort um, uh, but just from this view I think we'd have to maybe go there in person if we're going to talk fines and, and actually look um, but I don't think they're that far afield from what I remember them asking, um, and I'm pretty strict about these things, so, uh, so I, guess, I guess wait and see. The one comment I would make is I'm okay with bringing back in and, and getting some answers, but um, does it warrant a site walk for us? Should we do our homework and either individually or as a group get there and, you know, if we're, if we're going to go to trouble of bringing him in, I think we yeah. should yeah. Sure. have our plan together. So I. I don't disagree with that. I think it's probably, I, I'm not sure a group meeting, but I, I have individually go by, go out and take a look at it would probably be warranted. And I know I'm, I'm up against it time-wise. Yes, we are kind of up against it, but we have a little bit of uh, flexibility in the, um, in the agenda later. We have a continuation, okay. so we can come back to it. I also might um, contribute that it might be good to have an expert. Um, some people, I mean, either on a, on a site walk or the day that we invite them back so that we can talk to the fact of how we can better describe in the future um, these types of projects. 
Okay, we'll come back to it. Did you have something, Carol? Because we no, want to hear from you. In reading the in reading the minutes from the uh, meeting, it was very very clear to me that it wanted to be a stone wall that exists on the road. Mm -hmm. And looking at the pictures, and I will drive by and look at it in person. But looking at the pictures, it looks like the wall is made entirely of new stone, and all of the old stone is just laying in front. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I will I will make a point to go by and look at it in person. Yeah, I, we will move on because we have the, school, the first public hearing, but um, I, did, I did drive by as well. And I think one of the things I want to make sure I say so I don't forget it is that we could, um, he's a professional stonemason who came in lots of times we deal with um, the, the homeowner and we might just uh, be forewarned to ask for some representations, some picture representations so we know that we're talking about the same thing when we're talking about it with the Just one quick question. Is this town property or their property? The, the wall? Yeah. yeah. it's on their property. They think it's on private property. All right. Then why would they need a scenic road right. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, the, the, uh, the, the gate part, right? The gate, part the gate part is. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. That's, that's, yeah. that's pre-manicured part is on private property. It actually has to show you. I mean, we, we specifically talked about the transition from the very- We did. Uh, yeah, it's um, in the notes too. Know, straight edge wall to transition it into a, a more of a traditional farm wall and he said oh yes we'll blend it in very we'll make it work yeah. I think the word reality is the new wall looks exactly like yeah. the, the yeah. part that was already built there yeah. manicured wall yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, I'm going to entertain a motion to open the uh, public hearing, the continued public hearing for 90 Hayden Rose Street site plan review for the proposed school bus parking lot so moved. Is there a second? second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Um, and just as a reminder, people, uh, everybody here is um, welcome to ask questions, um, but Carol, Gary, and Frank are not eligible to vote. Okay. Please come forward. Sorry, Mariel. Should we? Can we sit or should we go? You can stay. Yeah, you can stay. But yeah. I don't think technically I can because I'm technically in a butter. Oh, yeah. are you in a butter as well? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Then yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> yep. Nope. I appreciate that. Keeping me, keeping us honest here. And then Frank, just uh, you didn't, you missed it. I missed here. Yeah. Um, or I had to leave early. Yeah. But I've been a proponent of this since 2008. From Carol and I are on a green committee, and so. Uh, Okay, if you wouldn't mind just uh, introducing yourself to the audience at home and the audience here, and then uh, take us away. Um, Susan Rothamick, I'm the Director of Finance for the School Department. Uh, Bill Morris from World Tech Engineering, representing the School Department. Welcome. Thank you. I'm busy getting to the page where our agenda is, but if you want to take us through any changes, I know that we were sort of um, racing to get it done this year and then it changed. So, um, okay, so since the last meeting, uh, the, the three main issues, I guess, were the lighting, the landscaping, and the, the biggest issue was the stormwater management. Uh, if you recall, one of the biggest uh, concerns from the Conservation Commission was the peak rate control uh, for runoff coming off the site. Um, maybe where that last uh, Monday night conservation commission approved the revised changes for yep. stormwater. And the way we were uh, able to meet the stormwater standards was we were able to make that attention basin on the south side of the property a little bit bigger. And in order to do that, we had to shorten the length of the parking lot. So what we ended up doing is reducing the impervious area, making the detention area bigger, allowing for some detention of the stormwater prior to the discharge. So basically that resulted in a loss of three bus spaces. So originally we were proposing 33 bus spaces and 35 parking spaces for bus drivers. Um, we got that down to um, 30 buses and retained the 35 parking spaces, which still allows some growth from what the school uh, department currently needs. Uh, the second thing, um, we completely regraded the parking lot. There was concern about the, the slopes, the minimum slopes in the parking lot. We were trying to minimize the slope to keep the elevation change down and limit the amount of fill we are putting on the site. Uh, we now have a minimum 1% uh, everywhere uh, throughout the parking lot. Uh, 
which again cause us to raise the edges of the uh, existing uh, field a little bit. We'll probably, originally we were hoping to fill around 18 inches, now we're probably around two feet, two and a half feet to achieve that grading. Um, the second thing was the lighting. Uh, there was a request at one point to go with 15 foot high light poles and at the time we we're trying to maximize uh, the parking spaces and what have you. Uh, the proposed plan does propose now 15 foot light fixtures, LED light fixtures, cut off, dark sky compliant. We're able to add some around the perimeter and one in the island um, adjacent to the access road uh, to better distribute the light levels throughout the parking lot. We had, uh, recall there was one spot that was kind of a darker area. Mm -hmm. uh, that's very good with something common, but we've now addressed that. The third largest change is at one point we were, since we're trying to get this done this season, uh, due to budget constraints, we're not proposing any landscape improvements at the time. We've now put um, trees be in that island between the parking lot and the access road to school. Uh, we're proposing, that plan had, uh, I believe it was five red maples mm -hmm. and um, landings, I believe. Uh, the last comment we received from the peer review consultant was suggesting go with all the red maples, uh, 30 foot on center. Uh, we made that change. The comment was to maybe have that be a condition of the approval. Uh, and I, I, Paul, I just sent them to, to Georgia mm -hmm. today. Yeah, mm -hmm. I remember to have a copy. Okay. So that's the only change on this new plan that came today was the change for the landscaping to, uh, to comply with the recommended condition, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Uh, everything else, circulation patterns, traffic patterns, the drainage concept as, uh, as far as catching the stormwater catch basins, bring it to a stormwater quality unit, prior to discharge into the Henson Basin, all that has remained unchanged since the last submittal. Um, what is the schedule now? I'm sorry. It, when so do you hope to do this work? We're hoping to do it, well, uh, as soon as school gets out next year. So we're looking to bid uh, this winter, uh, hopefully October, November timeframe. Um, we, we bid it at a tough time of the year. Uh, we bid it in the summer when contractors pretty much already have their work. So we're hoping in winter, when they're trying to fill up the, the coffers for next spring, uh, we might get better pricing. Okay, because that was part of the issue too with some of the landscaping and things like that is that you were um, over budget and you couldn't, you were very tight on money. Correct. So it's, you're going to rebid it entirely? Yes. Okay. okay. Um, Bill, do you want to come up and do you have any kind of <coughs> make space? <laughs> We should throw a third chair there. Uh, Sorry, Carol. <laughs> uh, just for the record, uh, Phil Paradis with Beta Group. Uh, we are uh, working on behalf of the town to protect the interests. Uh, and before I start, I just want to say a thank you for extending our contract another <laughs> year. I uh, appreciate the confidence in us. And yeah. we work hard to continue uh, working on that. Uh, so thank you very much. So uh, generally, uh, the um, what was discussed was is, was what we saw in terms of uh, the changes. Uh, the, uh, the the big concern was obviously the the increased uh, rate of runoff from from the the, the new parking lot, but they've uh, modified it and re-engineered re it, and uh, it currently meets the standards of of all the uh, all the ten standards for uh, the stormwater management. And we did want to make that, um, uh, Jill, who's not here, made the recommendation to mm -hmm. change the trees because some of them are very large and the spacing would not have been uh, amenable to. So, okay. so with that. Oh, so yeah, that was, those are the only open issues and, and they're resolved. Yep. Perfect. Perfect. Any questions? Yeah, Amy. So you have room for two more. So I understand that you have to do it that way. You only have that much space, but I'm, I'm concerned that that might be too small for the future. But, but there might be other places on site. Maybe in the future. I was just yeah. to piggyback on that question, is there kind of a backup plan or a secondary location? Let's say you go above the 30 number, could those buses then find a home somewhere else on the loop road? So I would say the, the short-term answer to that would be if the um, buses continue to grow, we would actually relocate the bus driver cars, and then we could get the buses around the perimeter. 
<laughs> for, the, for the record, 10 years ago, there was only 25 buses, and then we moved to 26. So it, that, I think that's the pace, maybe one bus every three or four years. Right now, anyways. Growth, growth, growth. <laughs> um, did you have to add buses this year? We added a bus from last year to this year. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, Deb. Um, so I was just wondering, um, one of the things I've been uneasy with is the, the amount of diesel fumes that are going to be coming um, off the buses and into the parking area. And I was wondering, has there been any thought to um, electric buses and to the future of, of that potential? And is there a possibility of providing conduit, at least empty conduit, for um, the ECO um, um, units that can be placed? We've, we've required um, several gas stations in our town already to have them. And I'm just wondering if these connections would be some foresight and, um, and um, a good thing for progress. Um, some of the or the alternative fuels for the buses, the electric um, propane is actually one of the higher ones mm -hmm. uh, in terms of alternative. As, so diesel is the most popular right now. Propane is the next of choice for an alternative fuel with uh, electric actually being last still. Mm -hmm. um, so from a bus alternative fuel option, Electric's not quite there yet, although the, the bus companies are making great strides in, in looking in that direction. Um, one of the things that states are looking to is the, the whole Volkswagen um, debacle is states got money um, in terms of that emission issue that they had. Mm -hmm. So some states are making plays for um, alternative fuel for fleets within, within the state. So we're, we're on the edge, but we're not there yet. Um, and the, the buses are bought by the bus company. Mm -hmm. um, so this contract has a potential for five years. It's something we could discuss with the bus company in the next five years mm -hmm. to explore some alternative fuel options. Um, would it be proactive to provide conduits or, or, or that would, could accommodate for that in the future so that at least they're dead-ended and in the pavement? Um, because I, I um, after reading a lot, I spent some time thinking about how it was going to become easy with the diesel fumes that we're going to be putting off in our public space. It, and um, I thought, well, maybe that's a justification for it, that if we see that, you know, in the next five to ten years, um, the cost of buses, of these types of buses, have, done, has, have, redu have, have been reduced by half in the last few years. And I imagine, and in um, California, they're buying them quite a bit now. And I imagine that's going to be where the direction we're going to be going. Is there any openings, any spaces in the pavement, and would those connections be available to connect to presently? How much time would would that would that be possible, and how much time would that would that Kind of investment. If I may add some context along the lines of her questions, um, the predecessor CFO of the school uh, was very much interested in alternative fuel uh, buses and something I think you're referencing. Um, but currently, the buses travel from Ashland. All 28 buses now are traveling eight miles extra. Uh, mm -hmm twice a day, four times a day. Mm -hmm. um, so twice in the morning, twice in the afternoon. And uh, so multiply that by how much less diesel fuel we'll be using and paying for and consuming. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a plus on the, on the green side of things, even though it's still diesel fuel. It's a step forward, though, at least for the next five years. But I think we could be touted as, as proactive. Could we provide that now? I mean, I think it's a thought that would be worth investigating a little further. And how would one go about doing that? I don't know. Okay. Um, how about um, the one open issue, issue I think that we have? Um, we've got the design and the access and traffic 
in stormwater management, I believe, I'm just looking at the, the detailed agenda so we make sure we talk about everything. Um, I think those items are um, all set. Um, lighting, we had some concern that we were hoping that, um, it, the lighting plan I see, it does cover your whole parking lot now because it looks like there are still gaps. Yeah, again, it's not meant to be lit up. It's no, meant, which I appreciate, right. yeah. So that's the, the, the maximum amount of lighting we can get Thank without you. putting holes in, in the middle in the spaces that it's gonna occupy parking space. Okay. So around, around the perimeter, um, we're in the island, you can see the two were in the island in the front, mm -hmm. and we tried to move the one on the, I guess it's the right-hand side of the plan, closer to the apex of the triangle, to move it out as far as we can. Any other poles are gonna need to be in the parking lot itself. And we're going to lose yeah. the additional space for buses. Yeah. Okay. So, um, does and do and any board members have additional questions on the height of the poles? I think we satisfy. Go ahead, Amy. I'm just going to say I'm very pleased that they were able to lower them to 15 feet and make sure they were dark skies compliant. So. Um, uh, will they? Will they um, motion activate? Or they? Will they be on all the time? They're going to have the option. Questions about that? I, I have a, a particular preference for um, motion activated, and I know that the, the police chief um, answered affirmatively that he liked your idea. Um, I don't know that he he decided between the two, but I um, have a sense that uh, that where you have gaps in particular, where you're not lit 100%, um, for some reason, my head stubbornly wants to believe that a little bit of motion would, would help indicate that people are out there. Um, but uh, I do appreciate that we've brought the light poles down for sure. And, and I think at least communicate to the schools that um, some deference to anybody, if it does end up being in a position, I know neighbors are far away and there's, there is some tree screening, but um, it's a very well lit, lit campus. Um, on um, page 41 on our literature and uh, sheet number 8 of 16 on yours, um, I found the 15-foot uh, lighting pole assembly detail um, extremely weak. Um, I tried to go to the mascot standards for a 0 to 30-foot pole, and um, I looked in each section, and there are multiple different choices. Um, it would be wonderful if we could have the specific one that, that is there because what this detail is showing, um, we would have failure on a high wind. I mean, this drawing itself, we would have a failure on a high wind. What do you mean? The way the sleeve is drawn, it's not detailed enough. Is there, do you have a question maybe for yeah, beta? I was just or? hoping that they can revise the drawing. Um, on page sheet number eight for the 15 foot um, lighting pole assembly. Or to be more specific, it was a very general um, statement deep, um, note at the bottom. I'm not sure I understand what it is you so want on the. Show, so, what it needs to show, it needs to actually show how it's cased in the concrete, the amount of PSI the concrete is, um, the depth of it. It needs to show what type of bolts are it's secured. It needs the whole detail. It's on the foundation detail. Of the yep. post. Yeah. Do you have a, uh, Phil, do you have anything to, to add to that? Did you have any concerns about the, the lighting post and detail on that? Um, no, a standard foundation Okay, any other things on, um, I think landscaping and screening is all set. And I don't think signage is even an issue, is that we don't have any signs, do we? For any reason? It's just on our, our oh, detail. There's concerns about directional signs. We need to oh. change the yeah, design yeah. review board, too. That was uh, one of the notes that it made, that to make sure the directional signage was updated for the new views. Okay. So there's no issues? No, so I would, I think it would be good to discuss the, the existing sign of the 
on site and if that is going to change how and if, added, if new signs will be added. Or could we add a condition that they would bring the new signs back next year when the I didn't hear you, Amy. I'm sorry. Just a general discussion. There'd be, there'd be minor signs, like particularly on the driveway, because we have it a one way, one way in, one way out. It's probably be a do not enter uh, or no left turn. Minor signs on the, it'll just be on the access road. There'll probably be a few signs, not, not many. Uh, does anybody? Do you want to condition that in a way? I guess I was just wondering, maybe. It, be conditioned that the design review board, the board look at it at the time when the parking lot is constructed. That, was that reasonable without having to come I back? Mean, to is, that, is that fine? I, I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. sorry. Could could you come back to the design review board when you're ready to install the signs at the, before, at the end of the project? Um, that would be reasonable without delaying them any further. Georgia, help me out. Is there a particular uh, standard that has the signs on it for our decision? Yeah. Does anybody have any problem with asking them to come back to design review with their minor signage when the time comes? I'm fine with that. Okay. Just had an anecdote that at back to school night last week, I saw people driving between, you're not allowed to drive there, but between the middle and high school, people were driving back between the two buildings and there were tons of pedestrian parents coming in the dark trying to get into the building. And I really think it could be better signed. <laughs> so that whole, right now, that whole back area is not for open to traffic but at all, right? People I, still do it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But it's very obviously signed, I think. I think I notice it <laughs> when I might inch back. <laughs> um, okay. But it's a good, particularly where you will have, where you will utilize it, I think it's safe to say where you will utilize it in a different way, mm -hmm. that being very um, obvious with your signage is not a terrible idea. I know that I have seen parents go back um, when uh, teams are practicing in the lower gym of the middle school yes. um, is and it's at night and and who knows if young people are you know darting to and fro and so forth um, all right Chair, before you jump yeah the section uh, yep. just a quick suggestion on the guardrails I see that wooden guardrails will be there and I commend you for that. That's, I think that'll be really nice instead of the metal guardrails. I made that same suggestion to the Marathon School and they decided not to follow that. But um, one thing you might want to consider is the, um, the poles going into the ground. Those can be metal and it will last longer than the wood that I, mm -hmm. I saw here. So thank you. Yeah. Um, so I think that we have covered parking lot design, access and traffic, stormwater management, lighting, compliance with the standards, landscaping and screening, and signage. Does that agree? What? I have one more thing. Yep. Um, I had asked um, to cut back the egress, the bus egress flow, there's the um, island in between to sort of cut back the design. The, the, that little island to give it a little bit more leeway for the bus drivers because I have a feeling the V there if we're looking at the light plan yeah is that what you mean the, um, well, that's the light the plan. that is the light plan yeah but the exit, but, but, but the exit um, to um, you know to bring it back two feet to give them more room because even though the flow diagram gave the worst case scenario I could see it being a very messy process So where are you talking about? So, so yeah, um, yeah. The the lower left, the lower left, that the last tree, bringing the curb back two feet, and um, maybe giving it a little bit more of a radius. Yeah. Yeah. Shorter yeah. Two feet back. Is, I, is there any problem doing that? I can't imagine. Yeah. Almost planting. Uh, no. You could probably keep the tree. Yeah. yeah. 
Oh no, yeah. Yeah, just cut the. I just think the flower yeah. I I really um, do appreciate the trees. I know it's an added expense and everything, but it's a it's a it's a nice to have between the building with the classrooms. It really is. And the cafeteria. No, right. Everything. Yeah. Yeah, and I have heard from um, a couple teachers that they utilize that property for you know things. It'll 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 make it nicer for sure. I appreciate that. Um, They're deciduous, so in the winter there's not going to be any buffer in those spaces. I suppose it's not as important, but you know, but they're bad. This isn't your only shot at it. I will read it out loud for the purposes of the public, but I thought you'd. Okay, I'm just going to um, wait one second. I'm going to open um, the 815 public hearing, and then we'll just go through this, and you folks will be, I, I presume, all set. Um, is it 815 yet? Okay. I'm without a watch tonight. I'm going to help for my friend. Um, so I will entertain a motion to open and continue the public hearing for Saddle Hill um, Scenic Roads till the conclusion of this public hearing that's in so moved. process. Second. All those, uh, any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? Okay, thank you. Okay, so for uh, the benefit of the public, the draft conditions for 90 Hayden Row, um, I won't read them verbatim, but just go through them. The site disturbance in the wetland buffer zones and, and slopes in excess of 25% shall be minimized. Um, the unique natural historic features shall be preserved whenever feasible. The tree vegetation and soil removal shall be minimized. Uh, site plan standard D on the draft did indicate the detail about the red maples um, and the planting, and that is on your landscape plan, so those can come off because um, they're part of your plan. Um, the site activities shall be Screen from view from abutting properties and residential use methods of screening um, are detailed in, in general. Um, all utilities shall be underground. The uh, exposed storage areas, machinery service areas, etc., um, shall be visually screened from abutting properties. The site plan shall show measures to reduce and abate noise and odors generated from the site that will impact surrounding properties. The site plan will comply with all zoning requirements. The site plan shall maximize the convenience and safety of vehicular and pedestrian movement within the site and to and from adjacent public ways. The site plan uh, parking areas shall be designed so they are safe and convenient and don't detract from the use and enjoyment of proposed structures. The site plan shall minimize the number of curb cuts on public ways. Uh, driveways shall be designed to ensure site days excuse me, safe site distances. Um, the sidewalk shall be provided along the entire frontage of the subject property along existing public ways. Um, just as a note, uh, sidewalks were adjusted on this plan to, to ensure that they are ADA compliant, and we appreciate that. Um, the levels of illumination shall be provided as followed, and it's, there's detailed um, out hugely. <laughs> Yes. Would you like to put, going off Deb's comment for the cut sheet for that detail, would you like to add a condition that cut sheets be provided prior to construction for that light pole? Yeah. Is that okay? What does it need to just cut sheets that, that solves it? It's, it's um, 
Yeah, whatever detail that M dot foundation detail. Dot the mining pole foundation detail. Is that? Because there's, I, I went in and tried to find that <coughs> one, and there are to choose from, and I think it could be very confusing and horrible on Rogers Park to pick the wrong one. So is that no problem? Not a problem. Thank you. Um, standard O, adequate access shall be provided to each structure for emergency vehicles and personnel. Uh, P, <coughs> form to applicable Mass Department of Environmental Protection Stormwater Management Regulations. Um, standard O, mechanical equipment or other utility hardware on the roof, grounds, or buildings, which doesn't apply. Um, the site, standard R, all dumpsters shall be screened from public view. Um, and all site plan standards and zoning bylaws, the applicant shall comply with the following conditions. Um, the Director of Municipal Inspections will, um, will ensure that construction is in compliance with the approved decision of the site plan review. And construction uh, hours are detailed that are congruent with our... Is that pretty typical, 7 p.m.? 7 a.m. to 7 p.m.? That seems really long into the summer hours. Someone's trying to enjoy their backyard. Is that typical? typical. I think it is typical. I think particularly since it has to be done dur during the summer before school starts. So yeah. Comfortable with but aren't there just the neighbors? That I, I do think that those are typical hours, but do you know? Yeah, those are, the, those are all the hours we use for all our site plans. So I'm comfortable with them. Did we ask for comments from the public? I can't. Oh, we, we didn't. I'm sorry. Yeah. But can, I'm going to finish reading, and then I will ask. Um, and uh, we were going to just add a condition that you would come back to the Design Review Board um, when you do incorporate your, min your signage. Okay. Yes. Comments from the public? Do I need to to a mic or I think if you it? speak loudly, they'll hear okay. you. Um, so Gary Trendle, 31 Chamberlain Street, speaking as an abutter, not as a member of the planning board. Um, through the chair, I have a question and, and a comment. Yep. Um, my question, I'm wondering um, what other sites uh, on the school grounds were, were considered for, for bus parking, if any? Well, we looked at everywhere within, within the campus to try to separate the vehicle and the bus. Um, traffic and this really was the only place that seemed to work. So, I mean, in terms of any of the other athletic fields, I mean, some of the unused athletic fields, were any of those considered? Or uh, well, you have to keep in mind that you need to keep the buses proximity to the school. Um, so, even though those fields that are way down, which seem like they have a good amount of space, um, and they are fully utilized, but at the same time, it puts the the walk for the middle school and the high school students you know, far. They typically like to board those buses and have them rolling within five minutes. Yeah. Okay. So, so I guess this is my comment. I, mm -hmm. For me, I'm, I'm very much um, against this. I just, I don't like the idea of putting another parking lot next to the school. Um, it feels um, overly compact to me. There's, there's no room for growth. Um, and, and while I, I appreciate the, the, the benefit of, of giving another place to load students, to me the primary, the, to me the primary benefit of this is actually storing the buses uh, in town. And I think there's some cost savings associated with that. But I just, I just, I think of like all these buses that are going to be coming back after doing their loops and are going to be parking and people are getting out of the cars and talking and getting into their the bus drivers at, at 9:30 in the morning when kids are in, in, in session. Um, it just. To me, it, do, it just doesn't make sense to store the buses at the same place where um, we where, where, where you pick up the kids. So um, I just, so I'm sitting and listening to this. It just, mm -hmm. I just feel like this is one of those things that we're going to look back on in, in 10 years and say, well, why on earth did we do that? Like that just doesn't make sense. So I do. I thoughts. appreciate your comment. I think that um, I resolved it in my head because there's the dual, um, the dual functionality of the increased safety for the parent to drop off and the, the um, necessary space in the front to increase safety as kids are walking to and from their own cars and to and from the buses and parents pick up. But you know, I mean, in 10 years on that point, we'll have a million dollars of savings that we would have spent. <laughs> we'll, we'll see if we have that million dollars to count at savings. I do hear that point. There are other, could be other places and other locations, but 
Yeah. Um, I, I agree. I, I, I think it's going to be, un, there's going to be undue pollution emitted right in front of the school. And I, and I just think that, you know, maybe even back near, you know, 10 might have been more appropriate or uh, somewhere over um, in, DPW, in DPW behind their facility. I'm um, just not sure what land is granted back there. But um, I, I, I think that it, it's going to be a mistake because just <coughs> the fact that we're putting diesel fumes back there. And um, that's why I was, you know, sort of crossed my fingers when I was looking at this today, this afternoon and saying, well, maybe we can justify it by putting some tabling back there so that we could plan for the future when we left there. And we wouldn't have to worry about it quite as much. Um, but, you know, I think that potential is, 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 a, is arriving um, more, more and more um, every year. It's going to happen quickly. Um, so I just beseech you to look at that. I don't know if you have time or whether this is too far on in the process, but um, I, I think if you were to go in that direction, it would be much more favorable. To the chair? Yes. Just to kind of jump on the bandwagon a little bit. Sure, jump on. Um, was there any reason why Food Street wasn't considered Food Street property that we already own for, for bus storage? Well, keep in mind, you still need to separate for um, uh, offloading in the morning and boarding in the afternoon. So no matter what, you need this area to put the buses for the kids to be, you know, dismissed and, and loaded. Whether the buses are yeah. there all day right. or not, right. you, you still need this parking lot to have right. that function. So to the chair, to, to your point, maybe it can be an evolution thing, right? If, if there is a decision that they'd be better off stored off site, maybe something like food seat would be the combination of the two would work well together. Right. So this gets at some of the immediate things, right. which is getting the buses into town, um, creating a, a safer flow, traffic flow for, for the students. You know, long term, maybe there's another place where they park during the day, mm -hmm. but no matter what, you will need that area. Makes sense. There's also future property across the street that's part of the proposed increase for the campus development. Is that right? The Tadaro property the is Tadaro potentially property, right? used. Yeah, that was um, where it was yep. originally talked about yep. the first time I heard it, but yeah. Yep. And I think that that just wasn't as far enough along to, to contemplate. Is that well, correct? I, I was very new mm -hmm. to, um, but I believe they were trying to get it in under the guise and part of the marathon project, but it came about too late in, in that. So um, I think that option there is a group, I believe, that is studying the use of the Tadaro property. Uh, so I don't know where they're falling in mm -hmm. terms of what those uses are, but it was a little late to the game to get it in under the marathon build. So, okay. Thank you, Chair. Frank, yep. Uh, it might be helpful with some context, historical context. Your predecessor had a breakdown of, at the time, 25 buses when he started. 25 buses times 25 miles per gallon or something like that uh, times the 32 miles extra that each bus was driving that they currently still drive uh, every day uh, compared to parking them in town and adding the excise tax at the then I think we're all believers on the, the financial benefit. But when we're comparing diesel fuel being next to the school, well, there's, there's going to be a lot less diesel fuel. Expenses and a lot more money on that we won't be spending on buses because of these. I honestly think it's a challenge down at Fruit Street too, because it's the town, the town wells, and the whole diesel, diesel um, situation. Yeah, but it doesn't mean it's not insurmountable. I just understand that there are some challenges, and if you park buses down next to the Marathon School or someplace close, the challenges are there too. So I think no matter what, no matter what yeah. we also uh, talked about it. On Center School Reuse Committee and mm. uh, the town is all that behind the Center School. Yeah. And uh, that area is a little bit too congested and uh, a little bit too, even though there's a lot of space, it's hard, a little bit hard to get to. There's no bridge right now. We'd have to build a, a bridge to it, um, a land bridge. Mm -hmm. um, but there, there, over the past decade, there's been a lot of discussion about all a lot of different locations. Um, this plan that's in front of us now, in front of you guys now, uh, I think considers 
everything that's happened and, and covers it quite well and is a solid answer to a, a, a real problem. So thank you. Appreciate it, Frank. Anybody else with any uh, conditions to add to the decision? So um, I will entertain a motion um, to uh, approve the site plan for 90 Hayden Row. So moved. Um, I, I should have said with these conditions as they were outlined. Um, any further discussion? One point, yes. Madam Chairman. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is to the applicants. This might be stating the question of the obvious, but if you start, let's say, June 20th, is the project plan set to have it done within approximately 60 days so that in fall of 2019, this project will be done? It will be done before school starts. Yes. Well, I don't know. What about South Street, where the town hall was, that huge parking lot? And to explore? It would have to be, you know, to explore that. Um, it would have to be rented, so there would be a fee associated with that. But it would be sort of out of the way of the huge congestion um, of Hayden Row. Um, and they would have to travel there, so there's a little more expense that way. But at least until, I think, we have a a better handle on what the diesel fuel is going to do to that area. Um, I don't know, it just seems like a possible a possibility. Everything, everything is definitely possible. Just, yeah. I, I want to say that I, I feel comfortable with the fact that they will look at options mm -hmm. in the future, yeah. and that we don't have to decide on it right now, that this, the plan in front of us will work for the, for the near future, and they can enhance it if need be. Yeah, I do appreciate um, um, the concerns and the suggestions, and I'm so sure the school does too. So, um, I also am a, a big fan of this. It's been a discussion point for a very long time for the um, financial benefits and the safety benefits, and I understand that it's not perfect necessarily to have the buses right next to the school in the back, but it's at least a good solid first step, so I appreciate that. Um, all of those in favor? So we are um, back on schedule with Saddle Hill. Oh, I will entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Thank you so, so much. Moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? I do appreciate the uh, friendly reminders. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Five um, does anybody know what page the next? Sorry, I feel like. This is 18 Saddle Hill. I actually found yeah. my pages. Yes, 18 Saddle Hill. There's an 18 and there's a 19. 18 is on page 74. It means document 18. Welcome. So do we really have 8.15 to 8.34? We did, okay. Okay, yep. 10 to 22, right? Are you able to get that? You should move right next to the table. Are you able to move that? Yeah, thank you. I don't know if it's new or not. We haven't been in this room, so. Second year? It's pretty second Yeah, because I have it in front of me over here, which is amazing. Wow, yeah. yeah. So the ways are going to work, work on it would be really cool. Yeah. <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> well, you've heard of MEMA, right? The emergency? I have. This, this, is, this is HEMA right here. Emergency <laughs> Management. Well said. Um, go ahead and introduce yourself for the public and uh, tell us why you're here. Sure, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Wayne Bellick, WDA Design Group. I'm here tonight with Victor Galvani of Saddle Hill Realty, LLC. And we're here uh, to request the board's uh, approval of the scenic road permits for lots 5A through 11A, which would be uh, numbers uh, uh, 
10 through 22 on Saddle Hill Road. Uh, like the previous uh, filing that we had with the town for lots 1A through 4A, uh, we had a bit of correspondence with Chief Slaman, who's here tonight as well, um, about uh, providing him adequate access uh, to the, the property, if you folks recall, when we were dealing mm -hmm. with uh, lots 4A. Uh, down to 1A. Um, so what you have before you tonight uh, are, are the seven applications. And that first illustrative that you look at, would you like me to point here just so it, it helps you folks? Sure. As yep. you're looking at the screen. Okay, so basically what we have, so lots 5A to uh, uh, 11A running right to left. Uh, and the lots, as you can see, at the bottom of the, the exhibit, I do have photos uh, of each uh, lot entrance. What we had done is we had gone out to the site, identifying those areas that would be least intrusive, um, those areas that required the least amount of cutting, those areas that if we had a cluster of fairly mature trees, what we did is we made a selection. Do we want to retain the hardwoods or do we want to retain the pines? So the hardwoods are, are, are more value, they're cleaner. So we had some areas where we had some pines that uh, we decided to come through uh, at those locations. Other factors were topography uh, and uh, as well as um, the, uh, the wall in those locations. The wall is pretty much uniform throughout. Mm -hmm. So you don't have larger sections of wall, taller sections. They're pretty much the same height uh, throughout. So that was the criteria uh, for establishing the, uh, the locations of the walls. As I said, when we met uh, with you folks the last time for the previous lots, we had worked closely with Chief Slim, and, and that was no different with, with this process here. I don't know how many times, how many iterations of the plan that we had sent to the Chief uh, to have him the review the auto turn exhibits, which I will get to right now, and I'll get into the dimensions uh, of the, the openings and what uh, the, uh, the numbers on the previous plan represent. So basically, lots five, uh, 5A, five 6A, 7A, and 8A, as you can see, we've demonstrated using the auto turn simulation software access onto uh, the lots uh, where the darker shaded area is the paved surface. And this area in here is going to be the honeycomb type pavers that were approved at uh, mm -hmm. the last meeting. Uh, when we met with you folks before, agenda and keep continuing it. So um, I, I'm officially over it. <laughs> but um, if everybody can think about that for the next time, and if we get a request for a continuation, it may be time to just um, end it until they're actually ready to come before us. So this has been at least the third or fourth. Oh, time. more than that. Madam Chairman, yeah. so. Why don't we, can we push them out even farther, give them more time, or I don't know what the continued delay is. Maybe so they are continued, they are revising plans, is what I've been told. So they wanted to come with a full revised plans about, that's all I know. Before we give them a date and a time, maybe um, we can get back to them and say what do they think is reasonable for their conclusion? Of the we can't. Really we have we have to have a, a date and time certain. Yeah. That much we have to do for sure. And especially I think this doing it this way, I mean we always stamp in our time changes to the town clerk. That way we know if for some reason a date were to slip or something isn't continued. So we hold them liable having a, a time certain and a date certain. Has there ever been a situation where they had to say, you know, you know, we have to put you off because we have other business to do. Well, I, I'm just, I, I think that, um, that I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, we could just tell them that, you know, we aren't going to continue them without them coming in front of us. They have to come in front of us and have a conversation with us because they, they have an approach that we haven't necessarily um, bought into and agreed to. Um, and it may just be time to, you know, have that conversation and make that particular decision and then they are at least working to a known guideline so could we publicly state that we're not going to we might we'll continue it tonight but that we will not continue it another time until they're able to come 
before us? That's what I am I recommending. Have a date. It's continued too. Well, we have to yeah, have yeah. a date, right? Perfect. Because they have asked, and they're not here, and we have to have a continued. So I'd like to make a motion that we contact them. I'm listening. Oh, sorry. I thought yep. You, yep. So no. That we contact them and let them know that they will need to be present for the next time. So we have a motion, just to be clear, and so we might throw that in there. Just going back to the motion. Do, yeah. do, do we also have an option to just deny the application? At that time, not at this time, because yeah. they aren't here, right? So they, they have to be here for us to deny it. Yeah. yeah so we have to. Um, Should I change my motion to a friendly amendment? So, Georgia, I'm sorry. Um, so, can we tell them that we are going to have the conversation, if we put, we put them off to the 29th, yes. and we, they have an agenda slot for 745, and we are not going to continue them without them showing up. They're going to have to come and make their presentation, for better or worse, Absolutely. on that time? I say we do that, and then if there's an issue with that, we can handle it after, but that way it's on the 29th. And we'll the if they don't know, we can tell them that it will not be right. to another hearing. Is that, is that satisfactory to everybody? That makes me feel. Although, for open meeting, I think the language should be not likely to continue if that is the case, because we are only discussing rescheduling this meeting. We can't. Not discussing yeah. the that. Yeah, I think to your point, Frank, we should be a little softer, right? Because you can't tell. I mean, what if some for some reason they can't? Because if you're actually, that dead fast against it, you would <coughs> say vote no now and then let it expire. We, we, we need at least a no from their doctor if they're not going to be able to make it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I guess I would just communicate to them that we're not going to entertain uh, an an option where they just don't show up. They need to come the next time. We've continued them to the 29th. They need to appear. And, and, and you know the neighbors are, are going to be are, will know that they're going to appear, um, and for whatever conversation we have, we're going to have a conversation on the 29th. Mm -hmm. Is that is that fair? And outside of this situation, uh, a developer is here and he left and he asked for uh, more time, but also neighbors showed up and it's not convenient for people to schedule their lives around decisions that are. No, it's very it's very difficult and it's 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 frustrating for people. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The applicant could withdraw and we submit a little bit. Absolutely, the right? The applicant yeah. can definitely withdraw. There's, you know, there's, there's some discussion about his approach and his, <coughs> there's some complicating fa factors and he is well within his rights to withdraw and, and resubmit. Absolutely. Right, so it would be, I mean, if we, even if we took action to deny it, it would, I would imagine it would be without prejudice and they, he would still have that right to come back and, and, and uh, move resubmit. That we, move that we vote. Yes. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So let's do this thing on the 29th. Or not, but not continue it. Okay. Thank you very much. No problem. And we're, we're back. <laughs> no problem. I understood. Oh, wait. Yes. No, he I said got he's it. Been on board. I got We've it. been on many boards, so he's used to it. <laughs> yeah. This is exactly why I combine the filings for the four foot temporary <laughs> opening with the, um, just not to take up your time. So, um, so again, is in a further effort not to take up your time, we could go one way or the other. Uh, if you look at the lots, you can see a point on this plan. So you will see a little chart below the lot number on each plan, on each lot. And what that represents is uh, the uh, typical driveway entrance detail above, which shows, for instance, A is actually the, the curb cut along the, uh, the existing paved surface. B would be the edge of that travel surface for the entrance that would accommodate the uh, fire apparatus. C would be the, <coughs> the removal of that section of wall, uh, and D would be the uh, reconstructing of that wall into the site. So uh, if you folks wanted to take a quick peek and have any questions, or if you wanted me to go through the numbers, I could do that with whatever works. So, sorry, just to, go ahead. just to confirm, so D is the amount of wall that you're removing? Reconstructing. Reconstructing. So Returning back. Into Between the 35 and 48 feet. Correct. Per lot. Yes. And 
just just so uh, you know, I think the board can look back into their records. I think that from lots one and four, the road opening was a little lot the, the wall openings I think were a little wider wider. So I really pushed it to try to tighten these up a little bit. Um, I'm not sure, but I'm, I'm fairly confident that was the, uh, the situation. If I may, hold on. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, Carol. Just um, mm -hmm. how tall is this wall that you're moving? How high? Couple of couple of three feet. Okay. Because I will I will tell you having a stone wall like this on my property, it's it's not a very good snow plow stopper. Yep. Every year I have to pick them back up and put them sure. back where they are. So sure. if it's not high enough so it's visible, it's just going to get run over every year. Right. Well, if the board wanted to add a condition rather than, I think I showed a couple feet off if you want to add another foot, if that makes you, makes you comfortable. I would be more comfortable or be most comfortable with it maintaining the same height as it's coming around the corner. Yep. Well, that, that would be the plan. Up, so. Yep. That's exactly the plan. So what we want to do, as I said, is just have it look like it's always been there when all of a sudden done. That's what we want too. Yep. Yeah. Now we were just having a very yes. light conversation. Go ahead, Frank. At this point, maybe we should ask uh, Chief Slayman just to explain the numbers and, and the Mike Shepard example from last meeting. Maybe let's, let's go to our professional and, and get well, Let's our, go to yeah. our expert. <laughs> Thanks, Chief. I'm not sure how I turned into the expert here. <laughs> but Congratulations. You probably missed um, the meeting and we voted you. <laughs> the applicants have um, gone out of their way to give me a clear picture on how this meets my ability to access the site for public safety reasons. I'm really comfortable. Um, your board has worked. This is really a pilot to see how we do work in some of our scenic roads and how challenging they are. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I almost look to you to continue your digestion of how they're doing. Um, it, yeah. It's the swept path analysis is the answer to the problem. It For allows you. us access. Yeah. I see that it, I have access. Um, the areas where it's not the traditional paved driveway, um, we'll see how that works. I think that's just part of the journey, um, working with our scenic roads, and I'm okay with that. Um, we just watch for some maintenance long term. How do these look 10 years from now? This is a perfect pilot because it's, uh, they have an agreement that they can write it into and we can kind of go back if it's not working out well in maintenance to travel over oh, that area. Oh, the homeowner area. agreement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so okay. I don't, they truly do engineer the solution, I, I don't, so. Okay, perfect. I just a follow up question for you. Does this allow you to only enter the site from one direction? It does, and again, kind of the give and take, our scenic roads. Um, I, I do a lot of work on on each site. The uh, primary response to these sites that I see and as far into the future as I can see from where our stations may be, um, I'm happy that this answers it. In that unique situation that a mutual aid engine comes from a different direction, then they're going to have to adapt. And again, there's roads where there are driveways we have to adapt some. But I just, I think uh, in the spirit of solving a problem without really blowing up yeah. The scenic roads. Um, I think this is a good solution. Um, just looking. Anybody? Yes, Amy. I'm just going to suggest we add some sort of condition if we approve the scenic road stone wall removal um, that we see a photograph of it at the end of the project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think uh, we talked about it before. I think about taking pictures and um, and I know that you haven't started to replicate the the stone walls mm -hmm. anywhere, have you? Because I think I drove. I drove up. They on the landscape again. Yeah, you guys are the lucky recipients of a, you know, a, a, a bad experience elsewhere. So we just, um, we all thought we were on the same page. So we're looking for those stone walls to, as closely as possible, um, replicate what they look like now with Absolutely. new driveways. Um, and you just talking about stockpiling the stone and keep making sure the weathered stone stays so it's shown and so forth. And we know it won't be exactly the same, but it should replicate what the rest of the road, what it did used to look like and what the rest of the road looks like. Um, so I don't know how we want to... To the chair, I might suggest a, a method. Um, what we could ask the applicant to do is to take a picture of your favorite section of that, of the existing wall, and that be your example as to how the next one's going to look. Right. And then if Carol 
you know, required it to be three feet high, then well, we'll it, understand that it'll It'll happen. be the height that it was, right? It's not going to be a different and height. Were you suggesting higher? Were you no, I was suggesting that it stay the way it is. And, oh, okay. and I think we've made it perfectly clear to the applicant that we want it to look exactly like Absolutely. what it looks like now, just turn in a corner. Mm -hmm. And I, I personally think it would be excessive to ask you to take photographs. We can check it out at some point during the future and understand that if you didn't do what you said you were going to do, then we're going to make you redo it. So, and I do appreciate that. We love to take photographs of our work when it's done. <laughs> so, we have absolutely no reservation in taking the photographs and we can forward it to Georgia. Okay. Yep. Uh, uh, questions from anybody who hasn't spoken? Go ahead. I just, I, I might um, disagree with that. I think because of the situation we just had, um, I think that we have to have some sort of common method of communication. And it's not because we don't think you know what a farmer wall is or, or that, mm -hmm. that you're not gonna, it's just that we have to have a standard method that, you know, this is what a, what a stone wall looks like or this is what, you know, this is what the old stone looked like. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to enter into the documents um, sort of that those images so that we have them we can pull them up and say so that we know that you acknowledged or whoever is changing a stone wall acknowledge that this is what it looked like. Sure. I concur with that. I think we recommended taking pictures before because you have this big long stretch and you're 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 doing work and uh, you know the scenic wall was was an issue there as well. Um, but um, I don't think it's excessive to take pictures of it and to try and you know replicate it as closely as possible. I would do that for myself as a, as a methodology. I wouldn't. Uh, sure, Madam Chair. So I have those images. I do have yeah. uh, images of that. So I yeah. can forward that to the, the town if that suffices. Yeah. So that way you can zoom in and that's, see. That's that's like the base. Yeah. Yeah. No, I just I just think it makes sense, particularly where you have when you get to uh, what what's the schedule of starting to replicate? Are we going to wait till the end at this point? Because I haven't seen any go back. You guys are close As we're getting close to closing uh, the houses three and four, that's when the replication is going to happen. So we're going to get the uh, pavers to come in once that driveway is paved yeah. and that grid, honeycomb grid goes in, that's when the, the wall is going to be replaced. Yeah. And once all the big, those, you know, there's a lot of heavy equipment out there, once that stuff's out and onto a different lot, that's when, you know, all yeah. the final grading will be done, the wall will be finalized. For my purposes, for my thoughts, it will help me if you take some before and afters um, yep. so that we just can and uh, you know, hold on to the standard that we're hoping to Absolutely. maintain. Yes. Just one quick note. I can't remember. There's a total of 11, I believe, houses. That's correct. So the other four, did we already approve those, or are they coming back for those? This is the last bunch, right? Yeah, or, yeah. Okay. approved the first one through four, and okay, this is the remaining okay. So this is the second lines. piece of it. Thank you. That's yeah. correct. And I don't think we've done it. We haven't decided it any differently. I think we talked about photographs before, too, just for everybody's comfort. and. Mm -hmm. Easy putting it back. So, so. The chair, I just I don't want to push this just issue, but the pictures that are shown here are when there's a lot of green. Mm -hmm. When when is the work going to be done this fall? Or for these lots? For these lots. I guess that'll vary depending on when we have uh, you know buyers for some of these lots. Um, it was Wayne. You know, I know some of them are difficult to see, especially this, you know, this far away. Those those pictures aren't blowing up. You know, oh, absolutely. So much easier sure. to see. Some areas of the wall are yeah, fairly. I tried to zoom in right here, and I can't. I really can't see. It's very shady. Some of them are pretty bu buried. There, there's a lot of dirt and yep. like, uh, you know, yep. loam and stuff, sediment yep. that's built up up yep. against the walls. So some of the stuff, you, you mean, it's, it's. It, unless you're right there, it's hard to know that there's even a wall there. Almost anything in some of the areas that we're going to be breaking. I think it in is. the fall, it'll be a lot easier to take a couple good pictures. Yep. But, so as you folks may also know of your your stone walls, there is. The, the base stones as well. Um, in my first several years working in the industry, I worked at Marquinauts just next door here. Um, and having done survey for like three years, um, they had a lot of great base stones in, in these walls. And unfortunately, once in a while, you'll find some knucklehead surveyor set a drill hole in a little cobble sitting on top of the wall like this. But for the most part, a lot of those walls are embedded you know, a foot to two in the in the ground. They did a great job way back when. Um, so, like I said, those as as uh, in speaking with Chris Donahue, I, I instructed him to take the surface stones off, put it off to the the side, the middle tier, 
clear it off to the side, and then excavate the bottom stones. And that's how it needs to be constructed as they had originally for structural integrity. Well, hopefully you will be a case study in excellence for us. I, that's what, I I'm, that's what I'm looking forward to. My wife to. calls me a case study all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, do we have any other comments or questions? Um, so I'll entertain a motion. I don't. I lost my, my computer. Okay, thank you so much. Um, okay, so uh, the following <coughs> criteria has to be satisfied. The degree to which the proposed work um, would adversely affect the scenic and aesthetic values upon which the scenic road designation was originally based, and so that's part of our emphasis on reconstructing it in the like manner that it exists. The necessity for the proposed work in terms of public safety, welfare, or convenience. Um, so public safety, we're working with that, and also just your ability to construct your sites, obviously. Um, compensatory action proposed, such as replacement of trees or walls. This is just walls, right? Correct. Right. Um, so you're going to replace them as best as you can. Mm -hmm. And the availability of reasonable alternatives to the proposed work which could reduce or eliminate anticipated damage to trees or stone walls. And whether the proposed work would compromise or harm other environmental or historical values. Lastly, consistency of the proposed work with previously adopted town plans and policies. So um, I will entertain a motion on the, uh, the request. So moved. To approve. Just asking. Yes. Move to approve. Thank you. And a second. Okay. Um, any further comments? So, for the discussion, are we we're going to condition it on that they were going to see photographs of before and after? Yeah, we're going to put that, that into the decision. the decision that we're seeing photographs before and after. We have the before, right? You'll send yes, the name. Yes, and I, you know, I could I could have some, you know, to one of the members' uh, requests when the foliage is down. I could probably get some pics out there. Well, the send what you have now, and yep. then uh, we want to always remain a reasonable board as well. Okay. So depending on when you um, you are doing your dismantling and doing your reconstruction and so forth, um, as best as you can, okay. keep us up to date with photographs. That's very nice. Okay. I appreciate that. Anybody else? Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank folks. you very much. Much appreciated. Oh, I will entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Oh my gosh, you guys are amazing. All right. So it's a continued discussion at nine o'clock. So not a public hearing. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> that clock is slow, yeah. Um, okay, so uh, Mr. McDowell, yes, yes. Welcome. So um, we have a half an hour before our next public hearing. Um, so we want to do the Wilson Street, but I also know that you would like to talk about the uh, sidewalk if it's possible. So we'll keep those two things. Sure. Would you like to do Wilson Street first? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so we've spent some time with VHB as our engineers. They've spent some quality time going back and forth with Phil at Beta. And I think that uh, we've, come up, we've come up with a design and a solution, hopefully that Phil will say this evening is acceptable to them. And what it entails is significantly enlarging the basin, probably to the tune of four times its current size. Originally we thought maybe two, but so it's going to be significantly larger. There's some additional work that's going to be done. I think our engineers, and hopefully Phil feels the same way, are very confident it will be more than adequate. But I, I think it would be helpful to hear what Phil has to say. I do too. Did you um, have VHB as well coming? Or no? no, I okay. didn't think it was necessary. Go ahead, Phil, I'm sorry. So uh, again, for the record, my name is Phil Paradis with Beta Group. We've been hired uh, to review this on behalf of the town and protect the town and their residents. 
So we've, we've had a little bit of back and forth, uh, and I do agree with, with Roy on this, that uh, the portion of runoff that comes from uh, the previously Legacy Farms Road par uh, parcel, now uh, the trails at Legacy. Um, so let me, give, let me back up, give you a little history of, of what I learned in, in this process. Um, so initially, Legacy Farms Road Le Legacy Farms was developed with the idea of primarily pr providing uh, treatment of runoff and not necessarily mitigating the uh, peak rate and, and, and volume of runoff uh, from the site. I think there was some agreement with uh, Legacy, f uh, with the, um, the nursery that they wanted to continue to have uh, the water uh, to, for their part of the, 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 the site. So they would, they would collect the water down gradient. So, so, the, so there was, in fact, an increase in the runoff uh, as a result of this project to uh, Wilson Street. Um, now that we are uh, going back and, and retrofitting this, this basin to meet, uh, to meet the peak rate and, and volume of runoff as well, um, that, that should no longer be an issue. Um, so they uh, as Roy studied, they, they enlarged the, the basin significantly, uh, and then we've also gone back and forth, sure, make back and forth to make sure that the assumptions that were um, made to um, to assume th those rates were uh, very conservative. So, for instance, uh, just on the condition of the of the surf, the existing surface itself, we had a debate about whether we should call it um, uh, uh, cultivated, as was the majority of, of Legacy Farms, the parcel before um, Roy started developing. Um, there's, there is uh, a little bit of history that we went through uh, Google Earth and, and noted that for a good, maybe at least the last 10 years, that section was not as cultivated as, as some of the other sections. So we, we uh, agreed to, um, instead of a poor soil, we made it a fair soil. So, so, so that, that, in a sense, brought down the, uh, the, the rate of runoff in the existing conditions in which we have to compare it to for the proposed conditions. Um, and so, so we were able to do that, and then also uh, because we do have some experience now with that parcel as it, as it relates to uh, infiltration and stormwater runoff, we've had a few issues already over there at uh, the trails at Legacy with a lot of sediment uh, being run off the site, uh, which is a, a very good indicator that the, the, the soils are, are, are poor uh, for infiltration. and so. We um, again went back and forth relative to what the rate of infiltration was, and so we've we've held uh, we've asked them to hold um, what's a, a sea soil is what what uh, NRCS has designated mm -hmm. uh, in this area. So the long and short of it is, I think we're, Beta is very comfortable with the current design as it relates to. Uh, mitigating the peak rate of runoff from the site. Mind you, we, we, we do have to be cognizant of the fact that there was runoff from this parcel onto Wilson Street before the development. So there, there was runoff. Mm -hmm. Roy is now mitigating what the development of Legacy Farms Road North so that it's not more than what was running off, so so I just want to make sure that that's a f that you understand what we're doing here. So there are other parts of Wilson Street that are contributing runoff that weren't, Roy is not addressing at this time, and it may be subject to um, additional um, solution, whether it would be D DPW or some other improvements on Wilson Street. So um, can I ask if you can explain to, to us how you, you know what did exist and what we are mitigating back to? So before, before we um, 
before a project is before before you go and design a, 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 a drainage system you have to model it best best you know with the best assumptions you can and that's why we wanted to check uh, Roy's model um, relative to surface condition soil type uh, amount of runoff uh, rainfall events that you want to mit you know mitigate and then um, and so you put all those components into a model and the model spits out the answer no I mean you, you, you develop a, 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 a rate of runoff and a volume um, based again based on a theoretical storm event you know there's, there's no uh, exact science in this, but it's a, it's mo mostly assumptions. Um, and so that, and then, and then when you when you go to design your system, you design components to it to either slow down the uh, slow down the runoff, infiltrate it, detain it, retain it. What you know, there's several ways to do it. So maybe I can ask it a different way. How do we measure success with some surety with this? this particular proposal so again it's the, the assumptions I, I don't know that you can measure success in the way you know you get a right answer in a test and you know is it, there's no like way around way, but uh, no. if, if <laughs> I if I could interject a little bit I, th I think when, when you look at the situation now in a, in a very heavy rain it it can overflow. As a matter of fact, we've seen evidence of it, so we, we don't dispute that. I think what's happened here is what, what we finally have agreed to, uh, I will tell you, is much more aggressive than VHB thought was necessary. But, you know, to, to, to Phil's defense on this issue, as Phil said in a, in a call last week, he said, look, it, it's now my name on this plan, not just VHB's plan. So I think he wanted us, if we're going to err at all, is to err on the side of being more aggressive in the size of this and the capacity of this than less. So I think this thing, as I mentioned, I think is more than four times the size of the current one. And uh, I think when you look at what has been designed in this, I'm very confident that this is going to be more than adequate. Um, fair statement? Yeah, I know a lot of people have questions. Um, did you Mine's a simple question. You said you designed this. This is four times bigger than before. How much bigger is it than VHB thinks you need? Well, any engineer will tell you bigger is always better. I mean, the worst case, you're just excavating some more. So, I mean, VHB thought this probably could be 60, 70 percent of the size that we're agreeing to do. Okay, thank you. Frank, do you have a question? Yes. Um, talk about metrics. Previous algorithm um, featured data that maybe didn't match what you wanted it to be because it was a little bit more runoff than we expected. And then you looked at it, adjusted the algorithm, uh, which brings us to numbers that should be within, once it's all completed, should be no runoff or a lot significantly less runoff. So the metric would be, uh, is the algorithm correct? Um, and previously we found that maybe it wasn't, maybe, hopefully this one will. So the metric is in real life, is there less runoff? Well, there needs to be less runoff, right? I mean, not to put too fine sure. a point on it, it's sure. problematic at the mo moment, but I, I well, do. I, 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 don't, I don't think the right, and Phil can correct me, I don't think the term is it's going to be less runoff. It's going to be the exact same amount of runoff. The question is, is it going to be contained? How it's handled. So, I mean, yes. It's not so the, the, road. the runoff is not changing. Yeah. It's the containment of the runoff. Yeah. Right now, there isn't sufficient uh, area to contain it and eventually let it percolate through the soil. Now, this area here being, and not only that, but you're adding some stone breaks in this thing to slow it down. So I think there's a number of things that are going to happen with this new version that's multiples better than what we have today. Yeah. Um, so when you're designing this thing, um, you know, I'm thinking storms are getting worse at a magnitude of years worse. What kind of foresight do you put into that, that type of planning at this stage of the game? 
so um, so what we've used is the is the the, the current standard for the development of legacy farms. Um, we didn't ask them to do extreme rainfall data. Um, the however the amount of uh, reduction in runoff is is significant in that. The original um, uh, rain garden, if that's what uh, that's what was designed, could only only treated a half an inch of runoff. So we are we are controlling the runoff for up to six and a half inches of runoff. Uh, so it's a significant increase in. in Mind you, there's still going to be a considerable amount of runoff getting to Wilson Street uh, because there was that kind of flow onto Wilson Street from the existing parcel. So is a six inch level of runoff, is that a 50 year storm, a 25 year storm, or is that something that we're experiencing today? So that would, be, that would have been what would have been the model for, it's called T, uh, TP40, which was the standard that was used uh, it's it's uh, data that was collected in the 60s and used for a significant period of time to, de to design stormwater management systems. Currently, uh, the new data that's collected through Cornell University, in which we which we've we, we've actually accommodated in the town's regulations here is uh, the extreme rainfall data, which would be closer to eight and a half inches. So if we're accommodating it to the current town at eight and a half inches and this thing's not built yet, should we be, should we be adjusting the flow so that it's six times versus four times this thing? I, I, did, I get, did I get the metrics right? So you're saying that the town is now requiring s no. for, for larger quantities of rain than the TPR 40. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So but this was all approved under a, a previous, you know, the special permit was approved like 10 years so ago. So what extent would we be asking him to do if he were to do a bigger rain garden? And would it be, would it be smart? Would it be, would it be? It, it, it's, it becomes, um, the, the, it becomes, you're going to be comparing eight and a half to eight and a half existing and proposed. So you're going to, if you, if you did the, if you ran the existing conditions model at eight and a half inches, you would get a lot more runoff under the existing conditions as uh, this, under the eight and a half. So you might get a slight increase in the basin to, to mitigate that, but it wouldn't, it's not going to be as significant as this going from a half inch to six and a half inches. So, if you yeah. understand what I'm saying by that. I, I also think it's important to remember that this road, when it was designed, was fully vetted by FST at the time for what it was proposed to be. And the town actually is the one who built the road. We didn't. So this whole road was built under the auspices of the town, under a contract with the town. Now. You know, one might argue, hey, look, it is what it is, but we recognized the problem. We stepped up to the plate, and we said we would agree to pay to do this, even though I might argue it's not really our responsibility. So that's the reason why when you engage Phil, we engage VHB, and we've kind of gone back and forth, expanding well beyond what I thought would ever be to get to where we are today. So I think, I think this is being more than reasonable. I'm going to go ahead and keep going around the table for questions or comments. Um, premature, but I think there's some letters or residents here that I think it's I understand, yep. Yeah. So I've got a couple questions. One is this basin is going to be on the north side of Wilson. Correct. Right? So I think that hopefully is going to capture a lot of what goes there. What comes down Legacy North. Is that going to be captured? Is there a catch basin there in the that corner? Road, no, that road is actually pitched to that swale. Yeah. What we've got to do when we do this work, we're going to be adjusting that soil so, in fact, it does shed across and over. 
There's some instances now where the soil is actually higher than the road. Yeah. So we'll take care of that at the same time. Okay, so that's the second one. And then the third one is kind of coming back a little bit more even to the south side of Legacy North, there's that existing basin. Now, I think is that the issue there was it just hadn't been clean. And do we think that that action is going to be able to mitigate? Because when I go down there, there's those three places. One is that first one there. The second is what I just talked about off of Legacy North, and it sounds like the plan is there. And then the third one is that basin for the area, which is the bigger, is the no, biggest no. one. So actually, there's three. There's, right. there's, there's two basins beyond that headed up towards uh, National Grid. Uh, two of them totally clogged, so everything just races right by. And the one you're referring to, yes, that needs to be clean. But if you look at where the pipe goes, it goes over towards the National Grid. And I was actually, I went over all this with John Westling in the field a number of months ago. Mm -hmm. And John said at some point the town will deal with it when they are doing it, I don't know. Some of it's cleaning basins, some of it's fixing the, con some of the, fixing the contour the of the pavement. Yeah, right. I think if those things are done in conjunction with this, <clears throat> that will help significantly. Hit the trifecta, if you could. I, I agree. of getting this done. The, this is one thing that uh, I'm just going over our minutes from our last, the last time we met, which was in June 25th. And, um, and we had all basically um, agreed to the, the, the concept that about two months from design through review and actual construction. That was, that was I know, ballpark timeline. But um, it also involved us meeting again in July which um, was put on the schedule, but then continued to today. So, so we're, um, this I'm just addressing because um, I believe the damage potentially being done along Wilson Street and so on, obviously we've been having large rainfalls right now. The longer we wait, the worse it gets. <laughs> and I'm sure the more frustrated people get. So um, that's, that's one thing. Do you want an answer to that? And uh, I would say, I would say near the end of the discussion, we could just talk about timing again and just, you know, just sure. reiterate what we're, we're all looking at so we can understand that. Um, the second is um, uh, just, I'm just reading from the minutes of June 25th. It was noted that DPW can start work on the catch basins, which I believe you were just referring to, within the next 10 days. I don't know if that happened if they're still clogged or if they became clogged again, but that's one point. Um, and um, there was also some discussion, and I wanted to um, just check with the chair on this. Um, there was discussion on this in the same day about um, replacement of trees and so on, and I'm not sure if that is a separate point that's from the... From the drainage and so on. So replacement of trees uh, that were part of the other project or our general discussion? It was all discussion. the same discussion. Yeah, and I, so yeah. that I was confused by that. I, I have some input to that. So um, Roy did say, I think it was five trees yeah. that he would put in. And I, if you didn't bring it up, I was going to bring it up as well. Um, my preference would be that um, they're maple trees, something that will grow big, and that we get them in soon before the winter because the longer they can grow, the better. That's was going to be my comment. Okay. Because I, I think some trees do have some relationship to the drainage. So I just uh, I wanted to make sure that that didn't get lost, mm -hmm. but I wasn't sure if it was part of this same discussion. So um, let's see, the other notes I had. Um, and proposed timing for the five replacement trees, and, and Mr. McDowell stated that mid-September mid would be a good time. So um, that was, again, that was based on our original timeline. but. Would you yeah. like me to answer those two? That will be okay, great. Okay, great. So assuming we can agree on this proposed plan in, in means and methods, uh, I think this work should be done before winter. Because if it's not, you get rain, you get snow, you get ice, you get all this stuff going on. And I just think it's just going to exacerbate the issue. So assuming we can get approval, I will immediately uh, get to our contractors and see how quickly we can get this done. Ideally, here we are, we're almost mid-September. I would hopefully get it completed by, I'll just pick a timeline as a guess at the moment, by the end of October. And at that point, the trees really don't want to go in until this is done because they could be in the way. 
So I think, I think a goal would be to try and get the five trees and this completed by the end of October. There were some other abutters. I just wanted to. Uh, one of the abutters had mentioned that she'd lived there since 1984 and there was never a drainage problem on Wilson Street until the construction um, took place. And that was that was just the statement at the time. And um, and I just think that sometimes when we discuss things a second time several months later, we forget what had been stated by other people. So. Okay. Appreciate that, Amy. Oh. oh, sorry, I thought you had gone. No, no, I, I was apologize. just getting I'm yeah. sorry. So um, I, I kind of feel like we should just move forward with the increasing the size four times. I don't think we should go beyond that. I don't think we should go to the extreme. I think that four times the size would be appropriate, just in my unknowledgeable opinion. <laughs> um, also, though, I think separately we should either create a letter or somehow contact the DPW and find out what they can do to help. Because we had talked about things like um, the gutter going down the side of Wilson Street, you know, maybe putting some drainage there. Like Roy said, do some, some grading of the road if possible. So um, I don't think I want to tie it up in this meeting because it doesn't affect Roy, but I would like to pursue that as well. Amy? I think I'm okay. I think everyone stressed my concerns, and I know there probably are butters that would like to speak. I definitely think there are butters that would like to speak. So if we Why do you have your fingers crossed? What's that? If, oh, to remind myself, I have a couple more questions. Oh. <laughs> um, uh, Katie, if I can have you come forward. Any uh, butters who want to speak, I just have to have you come forward so the folks at home can hear you, okay? Where do you want me to come? You, come right up here so you can introduce yourself and people can see you and hear you. <coughs> Katie Towder, 9 Kruger Road. So if I was the board, I would be outraged at this new story, this ever-changing story about the drainage problem. To say tonight they're saying that there was never a design done for peak runoff of this project, ever. There, and, and for that to come out at this stage, just you know, off the cuff and, OK, let's move on. That that I would be outraged. You should all be outraged about that. And this story about the reason it wasn't done is because Western Nurseries wanted to use the water. Well, that's, you know, that, that's just completely outrageous. Here we are on the fourth design since, since, since supposedly responsibility was taken for this problem. It sounds to me tonight like that responsibility is being untaken that the, um, the first design, which was no design at all, which has been admitted to, the second design, which was off by a factor of 10, okay, the, the, the calculation that uh, they said it would drain at two inches per hour, Beta came back and told them, no, it's only gonna drain at 0.27 per hour. And then the third design, where they come back and, and don't even acknowledge what they've just been told, they come back and say they argue with the point. So it brings up the question, who's, who's doing this design that, they, that, that they're not doing the engineering? There, there is a distinct lack of engineering. And what, what I see is with design four, it's being claimed that, that this is four times better. Well, four times zero is zero. Okay, if we don't do the engineering to determine what the <laughs> runoff is, and um, then, then you know, digging a ditch a half a foot deeper um, is, is nonsense. And you know, there's a 26 foot pipe. This, this is not a plan either um, that tells, that is suitable for construction. You know, this does not tell somebody where to put this um, there, there's a 26 foot pipe here. Where is that going? Is that going into the wetland? You know, what wetland? So, so I don't see that, that the engineering has been done. There hasn't been a, um, a percolation test to see that the, the report says that, that there's a significant uh, blockage to drainage at 32 inches. So, you know, 
I, I think what they're saying tonight is maybe they're not going to be able to do a design. You know, well, they, they should do the engineering. They should do a, a test to see, see what rate it does drain at, okay? And, um, and if they don't want to take responsibility, then the board needs to, to, to uh, take another look at this and figure out who's going to take responsibility. Because, um, you know, just, just saying, go dig it a little bit deeper and, and let's call it a day. You know, I, think, I don't think that's why we have boards. I think we have boards to, to, to you know, review designs. And I don't, I don't see a design here. I don't see a design. Um, so I would ask the board to um, to 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 order um, the engineering to be done, or to um, um, take other sanctions within their power, such as not to sign off on. Um, Occupancy permits or whatever, whatever in your jur jurisdiction, you know, you you you're supposed to be reviewing these things, and when when, when the drainage doesn't work, you're supposed to come back and um, order the developers to fix it. So uh, this state that we wanted to do this um, informally, but I think you know, fool me once. Shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. We're up to four times now. Okay, can you And with you? number four, the, the responsibility is, they're, they're just kind of saying, well, we just found out there was no real design, so hey, let's take a swag at it, and you know, it's not, it's not right. Thank you. Um, Phil, can you just speak to the basic question of, of the engineering that goes into this? Um, again, I, I can't speak to the history of this. Uh -huh. uh, we weren't on board by then. Um, uh -huh. for, for, uh, from, from, what I, from what I understand, it was vetted at the time. Uh -huh. um, but I think in this situation, there's a unique issue uh, with uh, additional water being uh, directed to uh, Wilson Street because of this part, because of Legacy Farms Road North project. Um, and, and some of the assumptions that were made, um, I, you know, I, I've been doing this for 30 years, so I, I understand, you know, the challenges of, of making assumptions and, and, and trying to do the best, you use your best engineering judgment. Uh, and, it's, and it's become more and more apparent as projects are being, uh, relying heavily on infiltration systems is that there's a lack of knowledge of how much uh, infiltration is going to happen in, in some of these sea soils. So I'm going to just uh, do a little time out here. I'm going to entertain a motion to open the public hearing for 930 at 52 and 55 Wilson Street and then continue it until this conversation is brought to a close. So, <coughs> for a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. If I, if I could address the chair, it really isn't fair to say that this hasn't been engineered. There's been significant time spent on the part of VHB and Beta to review extensively the designs for what is being proposed now. What was designed originally served whatever purpose you want to call it, but the reality is this has been greatly expanded to accommodate significantly more potential capacity than is even there now. So it isn't like someone's just been winging it. VHB, a very reputable firm, Beta, a very reputable firm, have come to an agreement on a design that we feel is more than adequate, and that's what we're here for this evening. Okay, I appreciate that. To the chair. I, I just want to see if there's any other uh, abutters or any other uh, members of the public who came that wanted to speak to this. I just want to make sure I got everybody. Okay. Yeah, Frank. Earlier on, our colleague asked a specific question. I don't know if we got uh, an answer um, based on the redesign, but uh, so I'll, I'll let the, through the chair. I'd like to ask this question of Phil. Um, 
based on the, the math we've heard, could this redesign be built bigger to actually be more effective? And isn't that what we sh is that what we should be doing? Or can you explain, maybe answer what her original question was? If maybe you can clarify. Yeah. Um, I guess what I would say, if we were to require it built to the Hopkinton standards, understanding that a great extent of work has been done, and, and I'm at, and I totally respect respect this and I like the idea of a, of a garden. <clears throat> to what degree would we be changing the soil to make it eight inches versus six and a half inch rainfall? What would we have to do to 8, 8P to, to make it, to beef it up, to make sure that in the next 25 years it doesn't overflow? <clears throat> because we, we are getting more water and we, and we should plan for it and I think it would be so, Deb, I'm, I just want to make sure we ask a question. In I'm, right, I'm sorry, hold on one second. Sure. Frank, the next time you ask a question, ask your own. Okay. Um, and um, I just want to make sure we ask a direct question that we can get an answer okay, to. Okay, so that's what would we need to do to 8P to make it, um, to improve it uh, slightly? <laughs> so, up to standard. Right, right. So, stormwater management is all about risk, risk control. You know, what happens when you design something? For a probability of you know one percent chance of happening, which is a hundred-year storm event. So, um, so one percent chance is is a very low. You know, obviously statistically, it's a very low thing. So, if we design all our systems to that hundred-year standard, then obviously you're going to spend a lot more money on infrastructure and, and whatever. So, it's always been a battle between risk versus reward in, in these kind of situations. The, the problem with, um, w w and, and, and then obviously when standards change over time, uh, when, do, when do you go back, when do we retrofit, and when do we uh, design something to this higher standard, and is it, is it really a better reward for the amount of expenditure we're doing? So, so and obviously we can run the numbers and say, you know, it's going to be X cubic feet bigger. So yeah, can, is it possible? Oh, sorry, that's okay. Is it to the chair? Well, were you finished? Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, what would is I mean, it possible to do that in 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 a week? I mean, is it possible to do it in a few days just to get a grasp as to whether it's a reasonable request? I well, the other question becomes the cost issue. I mean, this is now three times what we anticipated even doing. I don't know where you stop. If eight inches is good, 10 would be better, 12 would be better than that. I'm not quite sure uh, so where you stop. Actually, we're not going to have a debate here. We're not. Um, I'm wondering what it would take. So I also want to say something else, is that we are operating in sort of a, a gray, different space, right? And so we're all trying to work with each other to come up with a much improved um, system out there. So we don't really have, um, it, it just isn't defined what, what traction we have and what authority we have to make changes and so forth. Although reasonable questions in my mind are always, um, always in play. Um, I have a question and I see that you have one too, so I'm coming to you, but I have a question about how we measure success, right? I still have that same question. I just had a follow up. I asked Roy a question about how much bigger he thought this was than it needed to be to meet the stormwater standards. Asking you as, as the town's consultant, do you feel it meets all the, with a little room so, to spare? Yeah, so from our experience, uh, Again, we, we push back a little bit on, on, on a couple of the assumptions and we're comfortable with where we're at now relative to the size of the basin. So I think it's about the size it should be. Okay. Um, now, if you want to go, here's another question about the eight and a half too. The eight, they, when you do an analysis, you do the same storm for the existing condition as the, as the, as the 
you know, after condition. Right, so, so the runoff in that calculation is going right. to be higher to start with. Right, so you're going to have, yeah, so the, 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 the difference is going to be, I don't think we need to go through that effort again. It's, it's not like, you know, you're feeding a dam down, you know, below and there's, you know. Um, yeah. Did you get your question? I want to make sure you get your question. So I, I'm not sure I have my question answered. I just want to know what, what we do if this doesn't solve the problem. I also have the question, what are the other contributors? I know we're kind of running over time. What are the other contributors to this problem that are um, obvious problems on Wilson Street? All right, so we, we have the runoff situation on, on, on Roy's property. We also have the pavement issue on Roy's property, which he said he was going to address at the same time. So that, that addresses, once we get those two, which I think the, the plan here would, would meet those two. Then we have the, the issue of the road itself. The road, uh, Wilson Street is a very old road. Yep. It's, it's rutted now, it's, you know, uh, so flow actually goes in where the wheel ruts are as opposed yep. to the gutter, and so yep. it doesn't get to the, to the, to the basins and then therefore run off. So, so that's a that's a situation where, you know, I've, it, it's just a process. You got to redo the drainage in, in the road, you know, um, which is, uh, which is, you know. Are there other contributors that you can think of? So we know you're not going to fix the road. We know that. I mean that that's. You know, obviously, if you could put a canopy over it all and prevent the rain from falling. Hold great. on one second, okay? <laughs> yeah. but, um, I was no, 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 no. And I actually it was on deck. Yep, I, I hear you. Um, uh, so I really wanted to know, honestly, if there was a if there was anybody else we should be talking to. But it really is the DPW, the road, and the road, uh, the the new road, yep. which, by the way, um, I just want to make the point that the town did build, but that also benefited you greatly. No, no, we don't so, question that. Okay, I just <laughs> want to make sure we're, we're all aware of how this game was played. Um, go ahead. So um, to your point about how do we measure success, I think it's basically just monitoring the next year. I just want to throw that in there. That's not really what I wanted to say. Um, what I did want to say was we're all agreeing that this is a good thing to do. I mean, maybe we should be doing more, but I'd like to move to vote on what we have in front of us and approve this and get it moving forward. And then if we could, you know, this is not a finalized thing, right? This is, we could find more solutions down the road, but we don't need to so solve everything tonight. This will be, a, in my opinion, this will be the first step. Okay, Deb, did you have any last yeah, thoughts? I just have one last thought. Just one question on this drawing. Um, it's our page 100. Let me see if I can reduce it. Um, figure two, where it shows um, Legacy Farm Road, and it shows the dashed arrow going across it and down, down this one side, and then it shows it cro planning to cross the road and the grade of the road. And one of my concerns is that, so, is that half the water, was in the calculations, is that half the water crossing Legacy Farm Road and going? to AP, or is it a quarter of the water go crossing the road? So, you, so, so you, we still have just... The, road, the whole road is pitched in one direction. So it's, <coughs> so, but it's got only one exit spot. It's, it's got one spot that it's crossing over. But no, the whole road, it sheet flows across the road right. in, into a swale. Right, but the swales, so what's happening is the swale comes down the side, the swale comes down the side. So it's coming down from this whole side of the road into the swale. I understand that. But what's happening is it's surfacing and crossing the road. No, a no, no, the swale's on the same side as the, 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 the basin. There's a culvert there. If, if, if you're actually... There's a culvert there. Yes. Oh, there, I, okay. That's what I want. <laughs> it's not shown there. Okay, so... Um, and DPW has looked at this plan. Oh, yeah. They're uh, they're on board. Do you know Phil? I don't know. Well, we haven't no. discussed this with them. We wanted to come to you. I'm sorry. Say it again. This was not discussed with DPW. This DPW, I think, kind of looks at this as on site, and the work on the street is off site. Okay. So um, and has DPW cleaned out the basins that we talked I, about? I don't know. Um, That's so what I they know. emailed. Hold oh, on. Sorry. <laughs> 
Um, I had emailed John and he wrote back that DPW will continue to clean out and monitor the existing infrastructure. Can I'm not you, sure if that means it did happen. Yeah, I, can I you just that. ask him, we, we had the question, thank you Mary for bringing up the minutes from the last time, that we specifically had a commitment for the next 10 days mm -hmm. um, to do that work and, and if it was done in that time. Yeah, um, and just, I mean, if we're, you know, if we're in a next iteration, they did Not clean in. it out and we're, <coughs> we're waiting then. To, to add on to that point, yeah. if we're going to be contacted at DBW, can we just ask them if they can do anything with the, the, the side of the road? Or if they have any plans to improve the road at all. I mean, if we're so John spoke to that at our last meeting as far as improving the road, and that is not ne necessarily uh, in the works, but they understand the issues. But if we it. keep asking them, yeah, well, you know, we can right <laughs> yeah. squeaky the, wheel, maybe the, 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 the other thing DPW needs to do when they clean those catch basins out, the outflow pipe from the last basin is blocked so that needs to be exposed otherwise the basin is just going to fill up and flow out of the street All right. um, if we can just like keep the lines of communication open and make sure he knows what we talked about here and whatever his department can do to help us out um, on that end would be amazing no pressure Georgia just come fix the road okay <laughs> yeah. and Dave would really like it if you would come regrade yes. that road <laughs> yes are all the outstanding issues resolved? There's a couple here that say the issue remains outstanding. Those were sent today. Yeah, so uh, we have a new letter today. We, they, they provide additional calculations to show that. Uh, Since that everything's resolved and, and Beta and Phil feel pretty comfortable, very comfortable in signing off on this, which they hadn't done previously. And now, now it is going to be you that we come back to. <laughs> right. and, and I think there are those three areas, right? So we talked about before, and I know this because I run this road, and the issue, I feel, isn't necessarily a one-time storm where you get a ton. It's the drip, drip, drip that happens in February, March, and April, where it freezes, unfreezes, and that, and no, that's we, the issue we, to we, me. We agree with that. Yeah, and if, I think if this plan addresses that, we're gonna go a long way to, I think, hopefully solving the issues on Wilson Street. I, I appreciate the work that has gone into this. We may even decide to make it 10% bigger work. while we're out there. Um, and I don't wanna come back again. I know you don't wanna come back again. It is possible that we have to if, if we no, don't. No, I understand that. What I'm saying is, we're, if anything, we're gonna probably make it slightly larger than the plan. I think, Phil, you're okay with that, right? So, if anything, we're gonna make it slightly larger rather than going right to the edge of it. By the way, these plans that say not for construction, they always say that till you're done with the plans. Now, if we vote this this evening and we're done with the plans, we'll have them finish that plan so it is for construction. Okay. All right. And, and maybe a suggest an as built. Yeah, we're fine to with that. To get an as built plan. Yeah. Just to make sure we get the volume yeah. that we expected. Yeah, appreciate that. Yeah. I was just going to, yeah. um, Beta had mentioned one thing that we might uh, add as a condition. The detail of the overwall, overflow stone swale should include a barrier to prevent flow through the stone below elevation 422. I think they got that today. They they right. they that's today, it. yeah. And then the modification to the drawings that um, would show a proper culvert um, crossing the road underneath the, for, for the swale on the far side. It's missing a, it's missing a culvert. It's on the same side of the road? It's on the opposite side as AP. It's just dotted line as it's opposed the, to the Oh, it's already line. in. It's it's existing already. It's not it's there. It's not, it's not proposed. Uh, it's, it's this is the only proposed part right there. So the water so that swale is existing. Yep. And the water that's coming down that swale is gonna go through a culvert. Which, which is extensive. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right. I didn't know that. Thank you. But for clarity on the VHB plan should plan. show it should show it. All right, we are way past time. You get, uh, I'll entertain one more comment, Katie, really quickly, though. Come forward. So the catch base, the Katie Towner, Nine Kruger Road. So the catch basin that is, is at the end of Legacy Farms Road that is not part of this redesign at all. They didn't change anything with that. It's, it's, it's there and it, there's nothing being done to it. That, <clears throat> that cash basin has never drained. I've taken pictures of it um, like every time I'm there, several times over the summer. Um, it wasn't empty yesterday after 
you know, at more than 72 hours of uh, time where it should have drained. It was not drained. Um, the, uh, they're supposed to drain, and if they don't drain, it means they're not working. So that catch basin is not working. It's never worked, and I guess you, we shouldn't be surprised since it wasn't engineered, right? And it's- Is that, it's, the, is that the, I'm sorry, is that the town's responsibility? So we talked about some of the, uh, the, the problems that we want to follow up with to make sure the town is maintaining the basins. Um, They're right next to each other, the, the, the existing one and then the one, uh, well, we said that, that the complaint was that neither of them was working, right? They're both in the same type of soil. They're both were constructed in the same design. They both don't work. So, um, this redesign is, is, is fixing one of them, but the other one still doesn't work. Are we talking so, about the catch basin or are we talking about the retention pond? It's the catch, I, I, catch it's, basins it's, are the drains by the side of the road. It's the thing at the end of the road with the rocks around it, with the water. and <laughs> Still agree that's the town's piece. <clears throat> right. If you're that's talking the about the basin itself, that's what we're expanding significantly in size. Okay. You're not changing the one on the corner. You're changing the one on Wilson Street. But the one on the corner flows into the one that overflows. Right, so but the one on the corner it's, it's doesn't all, drain. It's all connected. We're going to take care of that at the same time. It's not on the plans. I understand that. That's the soil condition that Phil and I looked at. Okay. And I still don't know where that 26-foot pipe, um, that new 26-foot pipe is, is, is going. Where, where does that outfall okay i'll ask that question for you katie Thank you. where's the new pipe going i'm not aware of a pipe oh the pipe the outlet pipe for the basin yep it's at the end of the basin there it's uh it's designed to out, out meet the, the outflow from outside of the basin so so the basin controls the runoff so that it can get out of a smaller pipe. Yeah, okay. So, so that the flow analysis is downgrading of that pipe and the existing conditions and the proposed conditions. All right. So for clarity, yep. on this chart that we're looking at, on the right side is, is Wilson Street and it's heading, water's flowing north down the hill. Yep. And then it's just going to the next, to the next. Right. Okay. And it's, Staying on the Legacy Farm North property, it would it'll flow out into <coughs> Wilson Street. But less will be flowing off onto Wilson Street. Right, the same amount that's under the existing conditions pre Legacy Farm Circle. All right, how are we doing as board? <laughs> Anybody prepared to make a motion? I did. I'm Actually, sorry. I did. What did made you a say? motion to, to vote on what was proposed. All right. And to, to approve what's been proposed. Correct. And has anybody seconded this? I'll second the motion. Okay. Can I say with the condition mentioned by Veda? You can. Okay. With Veda 3, the condition at the end of the document we received today. Uh, you want to tell us what it is? Provide a detail of the overflow stone swale that includes a barrier to prevent flow through stone below elevation 422. That, so was, that was provided after. It is provided, it has yeah. been provided. Okay. Yes, so never been provided. Right. I'd also like to um, ask them to, um, when they do do their drawings, to make sure that they show that culvert because it's a little bit deceptive. It doesn't look like it's designed properly. That's fine. Anything else? Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. We're going to have to come back to you. I'm sorry about the, the bridge, the side. Do you want me to come back some other night? Uh, if you would, wouldn't mind, that'd be great. That's fine. Okay. Two weeks? October 1st. October fine. 1st. Thank you. If you'll excuse me for one second, I'm just going to go grab some water. Okay. Um, and I will entertain a motion to, um, actually, we opened and continued. We don't. So we now are going to get to our public hearing, 52 and 55 Wilson Street, if we can have the applicants come forward. Thank you for your patience, by the way. Sorry, we voted to continue that, or I missed that? Huh?
We didn't close the hearing. It does, it's not a hearing. Okay. That, okay. That, so we don't no. need to. That's, we don't need, okay. that's the. Di that's okay. The I thought you just said we voted to continue it. I'm like. Oh yes, we're going to continue the discussion on what is a public hearing, and so we don't have to vote it. We did vote it. Okay. Yes. Thank you. This one you're talking about. Yes, okay. but the last one was not a public hearing. Correct. Yes. <laughs> Good. Plenty of time that you're trying to figure out what we were doing. Apparently, I met a half of everybody going in the other direction. Yeah. You know, when we start questioning the procedures, we're getting tired. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Well, it's just that one is a little different, I guess, and for the purposes of you know clarifying for the public, that's we don't have a we don't have an open public hearing in front of us for that particular right, work. Right. 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 Going on over the niceness of his heart. Well, and because it needs to be done. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Welcome. If you would take a minute to introduce yourselves to us, um, and then uh, introduce your project. My name is Tracy Adamski. I'm a vice president with Tie and Bond, and I've been managing uh, the permitting process for the Hopkinton uh, LNG liquefaction replacement facility project for which we're here in front of you today. My name is Jean Christie. I'm a project engineer with Tie and Bond. And my name is Jim Blackburn. I am a project manager for Eversource's LNG group. Do you want to take out the ortho photo? I think we have one plan that you guys don't have. It's just an ortho photo to kind of give you a better sense of where we are and what we're um, proposing to do. You can set the easel up if, that, if you have an easel. I do. Does that? You want might be easier. Hold it. Our chair. Yeah. Hold it. That'd be great. Our chair. <laughs> or you brought Jim. <laughs> I can just start saying that's not an easel right there. Jim's <laughs> right there. I do. Yes. Which Jim volunteered. Oh. <laughs> right. That's why I need the chair. So um, we're here today uh, for the LNG facility that's located off of Wilson Street. Um, it's, it, there's the east side of Wilson Street and the west side of Wilson Street. And what we're proposing to do is uh, replace the existing liquefaction facility, which is on the east side of the street, in a new location on the west side of the street. So in that area, the, the work area is the area that's outlined in yellow on the plan. So it's just south of the existing LNG tanks. Um, there is a, a staging area that's located to the south that'll be for construction staging. And then there will be some existing uh, or, or some new pipes installed where the existing pipe racks are. So there'll be some limited um, land disturbance in those locations on the east side of Wilson, but that's really all the work that's being proposed on the east side. Um, we do have three small wetland, or actually I guess four small wetland areas that are isolated wetlands subject to local uh, Conservation Commission jurisdiction only, and we've been working with the Conservation Commission through that process as well. So when are you before the Conservation Commission? We've uh, actually had uh, two hearings, and we were actually waiting to kind of wrap up our comments on beta's review in order to finalize that process. But from a wetlands perspective, um, these wetlands are actually uh, kind of interesting. They're upgradient of the majority of the work that we're doing. I think they were or created by some of the previous land disturbance activities that occurred on site. And so they're kind of of marginal quality as well. And we're not touching the actual wetlands. So, you know, from that perspective, I think we've worked through the issues with the Conservation Commission. So we're just want to tie up both processes at the same time. Um, we. We have betas review comments because the stormwater is also part of the Conservation Commission's review, and we want to make sure we have everybody's comments. We'll revise the plan set and then anticipate being outside of the or through the Conservation Commission on in early October. Dates are escaping me. I think we're in front of them October second. Yep. So. The applications that are in front of you today are for stormwater management as well as earth removal. 
Um, this project is going through uh, Department of Public Utilities review, so that um, review process kind of takes the place of site plan review, so that's why that's not part of the application process that's in front of you now. Um, so we're in front of you for the stormwater permit as well as earth removal. Um, in general, the balance of earth removal activities will actually have a net in um, input of materials coming into the site, but because there is rock here that we may not be able to find places for on site, we wanted to make sure that that was covered as part of this permitting process. So, uh, if you could, uh, for purposes of our edification and also for the public, if you could give us the synopsis of the DPU process and where that is. Um, I can. So, I'm going to have to switch the. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, uh, Eversource filed a petition with the Department of Public Utilities uh, approximately around July of 2017. Um, as part of that, we have to demonstrate the uh, need for the project. Um, we answered over uh, 200 and something, uh, 205 or 215 questions for both the department and also the town of Hopkinton, who was the um, single intervener in the in the proceeding so <clears throat> both the department of public utilities had about 100 questions the town had about another 100 questions of which had many subparts so through the uh, state's zoning exemption process um, we covered things such as uh, everything from impacts such as the visual aesthetics of the facility uh, noise uh, what our impacts were to uh, wetlands uh, land uh, tree clearing uh, all number uh, facets of uh, the project itself. We provide a lot of uh, kind of preliminary drawings uh, and as they, as the, as the exemption process continued through, um, obviously design continued to be uh, furthered and so we were able to provide more detailed uh, drawings and, and other documents as we got further along. So um, right now we are in the final stages of the proceeding so the I guess the docket closed uh, back at the beginning of August when we had our public, uh, uh, what did we have, the hearings, uh, where we held the three days of, of hearings where the town as an intervener, um, Eversource as the company, and then the Department of Public Utilities had um, a, a three-day hearing in which to address specific questions and resolve any outstanding um, items. So, since that, the proceedings essentially, I, su I suppose, closed, and now the department is in its review period, uh, finalizing its review for a decision um, sometime in the very near future. Do you have a target date? We do. Um, actually, I believe we had initially September 20th. I suspect we probably won't receive it uh, here in September, but we'd expect prior to the end of the year we would. Before the end of the year, so we went from September to December? Yes, uh, the department doesn't necessarily put a timeline to it. Now we did initially receive a schedule very early in the proceeding. Um, and so that schedule, if uh, the dates were to hold true, would put a decision sometime in the month of September. So that's what our estimate's based on. Can I just ask a process question? Um, why? Do you come before us before the DPU decision is uh, resolved and decided and complete? The DPU's decision is specific to zoning, which we don't feel that what we're here to present today is related to the zoning implications of the project. Uh, I believe we're specifically here for the, the stormwater implications and then the earth removal permit. Of course, Neither of those things have any bearing if the zoning exemption was to be uh, denied. The project wouldn't be able to go forward. Uh, just to, for my own self speaking, it's difficult for, uh, and I'm a, a big fan of the public being able to impact the process, and this is a complicated process. So I, I feel like it, it does complicate it more for the public. It's just my personal opinion. 
Can you just elaborate? I wasn't following you completely there. Uh, this, so there's a, a process before DPU, a more global process. And my question was, is why are we doing the smaller pieces? Um, so if we do this, um, the earth, earth uh, and the stormwater storm water. management, and they get denied, yeah. it's all for naught. All and void, okay. Right? But so just about the timing, you're concerned. Yeah, you're more concerned. than that, though, it's a, the public's ability to impact this very big, very complicated process that it's meaningful to me to make it as clear as possible. So that's why I really was asking the question. Did you have anything else you wanted to say initially as you um, present this? or? Well, do you want us to get into details regarding the stormwater management system? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, so looking at the plan that is um, on the monitors above us. It's also above you, just so you know, so I'm, I'm not not looking at it. <laughs> if, you go, if you want me to go to a certain plan, just let me I think me we can probably stick with this one for, for a little bit. Um, you know, the project itself has been, is a pretty compact design in order to manage how much materials we are using to fuel different sources of the, of the facility. Um, the shading, the dark shading on the plan that you see is what we're proposing as impervious surfaces. We also have some buildings and we have equipment pads. And in between those features is going to be a stone or gravelly surface, um, the goal of which is to avoid grass growing within the facility itself. Outside of the facility, outside of that secure fence limit, any, any disturbed areas would become grass. So in terms of stormwater management, we have proposed a rather traditional system which includes catch basins, manholes, um, and an infiltration basin. Prior to discharge to the infiltration basin, which is located to the west of your screen, um, just south of the far westernmost tank, um, before discharging to that basin, we have designed water quality units to remove you know, the necessary TSS loading, among other things. Um, the eastern portion of, like, let's see if I can make this quick. The eastern portion of the western half of the project, so the, the eastern side right along um, Wilson Street, is currently has paved access, paved driveways, paved loading areas. Um, while we do have an increase in impervious area in that area, a lot of it is redevelopment. Um, there's some existing drainage infrastructure within that eastern side of this, you know, the, the prop project proper, I guess you could say. Um, that we intend to retain. Some of the runoff from the, this facility will drain to the impoundment area to the north of this. Um, that is, you know, it's not quite shown on this plan itself. I don't know if it's how much it's shown on other plans, but um, it is located to the north and it's, you know, that's designed for impoundment of the natural gas should an event happen. So it's not designed for stormwater, but that's where stormwater goes. Share that with me again. The, what's the, the impoundment area is for a spill? It's for the tanks, yes. Okay, so it, I'm sorry, but because I, was, of I was thinking stormwater. So tell me where that is and what that is. That's it. It's this area right in here. Okay. So to the north of the tanks, and just because it's the low point on the site, it does receive stormwater. Um, water from that impoundment area is pumped manually um, by Eversource as needed. Um, just to drain it so that there is that capacity should it, the need ever arise. Uh, I think it's at the northern part of. Yeah, it's right up here. All of this drains northerly. And there's, a, there's a berm that cr is created around the outside. Yeah, so it's, it's been pumped from this side of the berm, just the other side of it. And then I think you'll see on Rafferty Road on the south side of Rafferty Road, it has to flow down that swale. Yeah, yeah there's a swale down there. Yeah. Swale yep. yeah. When you say manually pumped, does that mean you're hitting a switch Rather? manually or you're? Yes. yes. It's, oh, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's an electric pump, pump man, but manually, manually operated. It's not pump. It's not pump. Right. OK. So that's the you know general overview of the stormwater management system. Um, you know, we tried to keep as much development as close together so that we're not disturbing all the wooded vegetation to the south of the project area um, and to try to retain those existing drainage areas or at least the patterns. So there any specific questions? I don't know how much you right, want to know. Can, can I ask a general question which really has nothing to do with earth removal or stormwater? Why are you moving from one side of the street to the other? 
So and what is going to happen to this site that you're currently on? So the existing liquefaction equipment is this area here, mm -hmm. which you can see is fairly congested. Um, the use of the facility, so we have about 300,000 customers that depend on the facility during the winter. So what we do is during the summer, we liquefy, um, we take gas off the pipelines, we chill it down the night of 260 degrees Fahrenheit, it turns into a liquid. Mm -hmm. We send that liquid across the street and we store it in these three tanks. Um, those three tanks during the winter now become your stored energy supply for the 12 coldest days of the year. So what we'll do is we'll draw from those tanks on days when natural gas prices are, say, instead of during the summer, $4, uh, approximately $100 this past winter, this past January. And so what that does for Eversource is that allows us to ensure that our natural gas customers are not having to pay $100 per therm for natural gas, but instead are about $8. So it gives us the ability to kind of stabilize the price to the natural gas customers. So that's the importance of this facility. Now, we liquefy for approximately, uh, currently about 200 days to fill these tanks during the summer. Okay. During the winter, we could only run at our full capacity for about uh, 12 days, I believe it is. So it's, it's a very small amount of capacity, but it's used on days when it makes uh, the most impact. So we may flow a little bit at a, at a, at a reduced capacity, a certain time of the year um, just to kind of suppress those prices. But in general, about 12 days a year it's used. Now, the reason we can't do the work that we have over in this area is because this construction project is about 16 months worth of construction. We cannot afford to lose a season worth of liquefaction. We would be unable to, or it'd be impractical to fill these with trucks okay. from other facilities. So in order to do this, um, we had looked at some scenarios of trying to replace the equipment right in its existing location, and it just practically didn't make, uh, it did not work. So what we did is we took an, another area of the facility, which is over here. And I know it's been some time since I've been in front of this board, and some of the members have probably changed, but when we initially started to kind of propose this project, what we found was with all the development up here with Legacy Farms, it made a lot of sense to take the equipment that we run the majority of the season, or a majority of the year, and move into a much more secluded area of the site. So what we're doing is we're moving away from your larger development over to a relatively um, secluded section of the site, which is bounded by both our property, um, Department of Conservation and Recreation, and then Wood Realty Trust. And then also a lot of this over here is all actually um, deeded restricted access. So Eversource has bought rights to uh, some of that land that's owned by Legacy Farms mm -hmm. in order to restrict any development. So what we've tried to do is build a buffer around our facility to kind of limit uh, uh, limit the, I guess, perception of uh, any any uh, neighbors to, to the facility. Uh, sorry, you I maybe want to go further for yeah. back. Through, through the chair, um, will you also be moving the noise associated with that equipment? Because that, so that's what you hear when you walk to the trails over on Legacy North. Would that be moving over this south side as well? Yes, so currently the existing exemptions for the facility limit the noise at the property line, so about 55 decibels, which is um, really the federal standard. Um, our facility, the, the, the newer section of the facility will be, is, is much more stringent. So uh, we had to limit the sound produced from the new equipment to 10 decibels above the existing lowest measured condition. So we went out here and measured noise, which was about 32 decibels on the coldest, quietest night of the year, which was in about the month of February. That means that our modeling and our equipment's designed not to exceed about 42 decibels of the property line. So significantly quieter than over in this location and about 1,500 feet from any of the development over here. So we felt that while we are impacting a, a small area of the property, it's about six acres or so that we're six impacting over here. Um, it is previously disturbed, uh, but by moving that equipment over here, we felt like we had, uh, we probably are an improvement to the overall condition of the facility and the, and the noise or perception from the new development. So, so it's, what are you gonna do with the property on the east side of this uh -huh. though? So there is still existing equipment over here that will have to be maintained. So our control rooms on this side of the facility, our vaporization equipment is on this side of the facility, and our, our high pressure send out pumps. Now, those two pieces of equipment only operate again for about the 12 days a year that we, we run the facility for vaporization. Um, so we'll go from an operation that typically runs 
200 plus days a year down to about 12 days a year of mechanical equipment running over here. Um, there's also a process called boil off gas compression which there's um, several engines in this building here which takes gas off of the tanks throughout the day, <coughs> presses it and puts it out into our, our distribution system. Now that's because the tank always has some vaporization within it naturally. So we have to do something with those vapors. That's the burnoff we see at the up top, right? Uh, it's not actually. Oh. I can talk to that too. So th that is these tanks because it's negative 260 degrees Fahrenheit. As any heat leaks into them, you always get a little bit of boiling of the liquid. So we have to dispose of that because these tanks operate at, at atmospheric pressure. So we can't let them build pressure. So we have to take that and instead of burning it, what we do is we put it out into the distribution system and customers use it for gas. That's a 24-hour day, seven days a week operation throughout the year. Those, those engines, which would have to run throughout the year just for that, which again produces noise, will now be moved over to this side of the facility where we'll be doing two things. One, it's, it's in an enclosed building that'll be in, um, insulated and sound material. Uh, also, two of the compressors will be electric driven. So we'll go from having to run two, we'll go from running uh, several very large engines, engines throughout the year for compression to really two electric engines the majority of the year. And then we'll have two standby units, which are gas-fired engines. And those will run at a reduced uh, period of time. So that helps us both with our emissions. So we'll be cutting down significantly on air emissions from the facility. But it also reduces noise, because now we're not running a combustion engine and a compressor at the same time. So there's also a benefit throughout the year just from the movement of that equipment. Regarding the flare, we'll still maintain the two flares that are up here. And, and obviously, if you've ever seen them going off, they, they are a sight. Uh, the difference is, Currently, those operate when the facility is liquefying. So again, that 200 days a year that we liquefy, we have um, some components of the natural gas, which are called heavies, which are uh, things like, uh, natural gas is methane, so it would be like um, hexane, ethane, some of the heavier hydrocarbons. Those have to get disposed of, and instead of trucking them off-site, currently they're burned. Now, we do have some micro turbines where we convert them into electrical energy, so we do limit some of that now. Uh, we've We've implemented those about 10 years ago. Um, the new facility, however, we use those as our fuel source and our new compressor. So we actually eliminate flaring those 200 days a year. And what happens is our three flares now become emergency use only. And so they're only for upset conditions. So if we had a, <clears throat> an event where a valve closed too quickly because of some process condition, that we typically do not vent to atmosphere, whereas uh, other facilities would vent their reliefs right to atmosphere. We, we burn that off so that we don't create some type of an unsafe condition where the gas can pool. So those three flares, because there is a new flare associated with this, it's much smaller than the one up across the street. Um, but those three flares will only operate during those emergency conditions. So we'll go to several hours per year compared to the, the days that it's running during the liquefaction currently. So how many flares on each side? Sorry. There's, there's currently two over here. And then one new one? There'll be one over here. Thank you. So this one over here is about 40 foot tall, and I think you've got a 60 and a 150 foot flare. Those will remain, but not, they won't be as you see now during the summer uh, with a flame from the top of them. And this is at a much lower elevation, so that's kind of another point is um, where visually you can see these from kind of the surrounding area. This one here is, is much lower, so not only is the elevation much lower, but the flare itself is a lot shorter. just because you've got me after it a little bit. Yeah, Frank, you should have paid <laughs> more attention in chemistry class. <laughs> uh, the other thing is when we run, right, that 200 days a year, we're taking LNG that we're producing here and we're sending it over to the tanks over here. Um, during the winter then, the 12 days, it's again crossing that road. So again, by locating now the equipment on this side of the road, we're not having to cross the road the majority of the year with LNG. So the LNG is now flowing from this new location directly into the tanks. So. While we don't feel that there's an issue with the road crossing and, and the LNG crossing, it, it does address some of those issues that have been brought up previously by other members of the community. Point of clarification. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned that there were several hours of emergency. Uh, is that typical? Of a yeah, so I say emergency. Um, it could be, um, I know there was an event last summer where we had a fuse that burnt out on the transmitter which is, uh, indicates pressure for us. Um, that caused the system to shut down. The system had to vent somewhere. That vented, now that vented to atmosphere and was quite loud and, and created uh, some community feedback. Um, 
that would be considered emergency <laughs> feedback. So I that, like that. that. Yes. That would be considered an emergency. Now, the reality is we didn't have an unsafe condition. The plant operators have to exactly as it should. As it's designed. Yep. Some of the other hours of operation that that may get used would be like during the startup or the shutdown at the beginning and the end of the season. You need to clean the, the, the natural gas that's in the lines. So we would send that to the flare so you burn that off and dispose of it. One, one more question along those lines. Um, when it does vent to atmosphere, what does that mean chemically? You release methane to the atmosphere and then it would just disperse. Um, just like any other. Uh, Um, so we're not actually to questions and answers until we've um, heard your whole presentation and then beta. I'm but done. I appreciate what you said, though. <laughs> I should say thank you. Jim always does a great job. Um, Jim, I, I've thank been living you. for the last year, so I apologize. I kind of get a little passionate with it. it is, we do no, feel it's, like it's very exciting. We, we do yeah. feel like we did a lot of them. You know, we tried to do as much as we could to, to do the right thing. I think the location of the plant is kind of tucked away in the trees. We tried purposely to do that, so we did limit, we believe. So can I just ask globally another question? I just told everybody we weren't to questions, so I apologize in advance for my actions. Um, are you um, are you as a as a company moving to further you know sort of uh, move away from that whole this side over side? here? Side, um, or is I, it? I would say no because we do own that property. It is already impacted, um, so we will leave some of the existing operation over there. Yeah. Um, again, it's a little bit more limited use than after we moved the liquefier over. Um, I think you redid the whole parking. Sorry, and redid the whole parking lot on that side too, we right? Did, we did. We have a lot of other investments that took place over here. We replaced the vaporizers a couple of years ago, which again was our, you know, kind of the, the more significant piece of equipment for us. That's we depend 100% on that during the winter to, to supply that gas. So we have put quite a bit of investment on this side of the facility. So I won't say we're abandoning that at all. We do see value in moving as much of the operation and consolidating the operation, at least from a seasonal perspective, where we operate during the summer over here and we operate during the winter over here and try to, you know, limit the for operations and other folks going back and forth across that street. In an ideal world, this would have all been on one single site that wasn't bisected by a, by a town mm -hmm. street. Mm -hmm. The nifty little scenic road. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, thank you. Um, oh, we should hear from Beta, but then we also, and whoever's here um, from the public, um, at least briefly. I know we're, we're over time, um, and then agree to when we'll see you again. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm going to have uh, Jillian Bopath. Uh, she did a lot of the review of the project. Okay, thank you. And she can summarize uh, our findings. Perfect. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jill Bokoff. I'm with Beta, and I worked with Phil reviewing this project. Um, in general, Beta didn't find a lot of issues when we were review reviewing this project. Um, the project does propose an increase of impervious cover of, of approximately four acres. The site has a wide range of soil types, so our comments were sort of um, more geared around infiltration. Um, one of the things we were looking for clarification, first of all, was on the limits of proposed curb and surface materials so that we could better assess the runoff. Um, another thing we were looking for is some clarification on soil data, uh, specifically the test pit data that we reviewed were um, borings conducted in non-seasonal high groundwater months, so we were looking for some more information there. And lastly, we were looking for some more information on the earth removal, uh, looking for an estimated volume of removal so we could better understand the impacts specifically to um, traffic in the area. Is that it? I don't think mm -hmm. so. Thank you. Um, because we're running, is, is there any members of the public who wanted to make sure they spoke? Yep, go ahead, Katie. <coughs> Katie Towner, 9 Kruger Road. So I wanted to make a comment about the, um, the increase in the, the water going to the outfall on that area that goes across the street. Mm -hmm. um, 
the, as I understand the stormwater standards, they're not supposed to increase what they put off the site. They're supposed to um, break even. So um, there is an increase. Um, and uh, where it's going is it goes, it goes across Legacy Farms Road, under the road, and then it goes to a stream, which does not go, does not go down Legacy Farm Roads. It goes, the stream goes all the way through the woods to my property line. So the stream flows from, from, uh, from their property under the road, all the way through the woods, and it goes between my property, Nine Kruger Road, and the house next to me, Seven Kruger Road. Okay, that stream runs um, pretty hard. It runs all the way down into the, into the reservoir. It runs pretty much at capacity. So um, when I read the stormwater report and it said that, it said that uh, no, no effort was made to to not increase the flow because there was no impact, because it was just going to a low-lying area and there was no impact. So I would say that this is another case where we're not, you know, we're not doing adequate engineering because, because that stream does go to my house and I know the water goes to my house because when they pump out their, uh, when they have their fire training exercises and they fill their basin with foam and they pump it out, it comes right down to my house. So, uh, you know, I've seen that. I've taken pictures of it. Um, I don't know what's in that foam. You know, I, I, I assume it's training foam, that it's non-toxic, but I don't know that. Um, when I have seen it billowing in the stream, behind my house, I have called the, the, the company and people have come out and looked at it, say, oh yeah, that's us. So, so uh, you know, they know the water goes there. I know the water goes there. And I would like an analysis as to, you know, um, it, I read the stormwater standards, and it and it says that you're supposed to you're supposed to figure out what the downstream impact is. So, um, at you know two cubic feet per second, you know what is that what is that going to mean if they've increased that? What's that going to mean for that stream? That stream is already running at capacity. Is it gonna is it gonna flood flood my land or whatever? Is it or um, I guess create erosion, which will, you know, destroy the the wetlands next to it or whatever. But it it just um, I think there ought to be an analysis for for where it's actually going, and um, I will I will try to dig up those pictures of the um, you know I very interested in what they said about they 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 actually pump the water out of this basin into the stream goes behind my house and so I guess it must have been an active act to actually pump the foam out too so you know I guess I guess that's I don't think they're supposed to do that I think I think if they have an actual fire obviously they're allowed to you know the the firefighting foam is an exemption but for training exercises I don't you know I I don't think they're supposed to be pumping the foam out of there Uh, before we uh, figure out when we're going to meet next, can I ask the fire chief to give us any thoughts that he has? I would just say I'm available for questions at this point. So okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. We, we would like uh, permission to work with the engineer directly. Yep. Um, to, to, there's a there's a number of uh, minor well. Minor, not so minor uh, issues we need to work with. Just really technical things. But. Okay. It's to the chair, have you seen the response yet? This just came today. Yeah, we looked over them briefly. So, I mean, it's, there's Six some, pages some discussion. Yep. Okay. Let me just ask for clarity. Um, what we, we need to continue and change the 
or get agreement on a changing of the decision yes. date? So the um, stormwater management permit, the decision is due on September 25th. And the earth removal, the decision is due November 1st. And while I'm on it, I could tell you our lineup for the next hearing. Yep. So 7.45, we have Wilson Street Solar. We have uh -huh. that for an hour. 8.45, we have Whisper Way. 9.30, we have the second permit for the LNG facility, which is not opened yet, and that's for the secondary access road. What, that's not, say the time again. 9.30. 9.30 for the access road, okay. And then October 15th, um, 7.45, we have one public hearing, which is um, a parking special permit. It's a what? Uh, parking special parking permit. Parking special 18 permit. 18 Cedar Street. I gotcha. They, that 18 Cedar Street is before the Board of Appeals right now, is that right? Mm -hmm. Correct. And what's their schedule, do we know? I don't know off the top of my head. They started the hearing on September 12th, and it was, it was continued without discussion mm -hmm. until uh, September 26th. So they haven't even really started it. Okay. Um, okay. So it doesn't really feel like there's time on the on October first. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, so uh, are you folks back? Also, is it the same team for the access road? Yeah. <laughs> um, we, we are close to giving our comments for the access road. Was that on the 29th? Is that what it is? Yeah, uh, the, uh, the access road starts at 9.30 on uh, October 1st. Oh, October 1st. Yeah. Um, I guess what I would recommend, for, I'm tossing it up for consideration, is that we save, we continue this to the, to the 15th, and we save time um, when we meet on the 1st, should the access road need to be continued for as well, so that we... Get you guys somehow together, mm -hmm. depending on how this goes. Um, does that sound reasonable? Um, all right. How much time do you think we should do for the Cedar Street on the fifteenth? Hard to tell because I don't. Hmm. Twenty-five minutes. Okay. Um, all right. Let's. I mean, we'll, we'll just uh, let's at least do a half hour. And then 8.15 um, for th this, the earth removal and the storm water. And storm water. Um, and then at, at next meeting, we need to just try and remember to save some space, for some space maybe at 9.00. For the access road, so we get you guys together if the continuations are happening. Okay. Pencil so that's in, right? we're penciling that in. Yes. That, yeah. Yeah. Two nine thirty. You mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, let's hope, right? <coughs> um, so that would sort of leave us with um, room for one more. Mm -hmm. Potential thing in the month of October. In the month of October, we can take Dance on partner. one more piece of business. So, <laughs> all right. And then for the decision deadline for stormwater management, um, sorry, I forget what I had said. What was that? You said 9:25 is the current. Yes. So if we could continue that to we are meeting on the 15th. Um, I would say a week after that. Okay. So the 22nd. Is that amenable? The twenty second is the new decision date. Yes. Okay. All right. So I'll entertain a motion. First of all, we agree that the engineers can work together and talk, mm -hmm. um, and that we are continuing. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to continue this hearing to um, uh, October 
15th at 8.15, um, and the decision on the stormwater management plan continued, uh, extended to a deadline of 10.22. I don't think the earth removal has to be extended. That de deadline is 11.1. Good. Anybody want to make a motion? So, so moved. moved. Second. So move second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you very much. All right. Uh, yes, unless somebody would like to move the minutes. Uh, we'll close the public hearing. Oh, no. We continue to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. I'd like to move the minutes with one typo. Oh, no. <gasps> what? Colby. <laughs> It's really, really minor. I'll show you where it is later. <laughs> Everything else was good that with me. You read them thoroughly. I did. Wow. Second. Any other comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? That's a lot of trust, Carol, because you just you got carte blanche to whatever that typo is. Yeah. It's minor. All right. Did we have anything else that we didn't really get back to the scenic roads? We should carve out some time for that. Um, Amy wants to carve out some time for, for the planning board website. I did meet with Josh yep. Garcetti at Town Hall, mostly about the historic district website, but I was also able to ask my same questions about the planning board site. So I have. I see that we all have a tab for bios and we're all empty. It's sort of the <laughs> selectmen. Nobody, nobody put their bios in. And you can send your photo. He'll put your photo okay. on. Yeah. Yes. I have sent my biographical Keep it information. It Google never Google. makes it in. Just letting you know. The Board of Appeals has a photo. <laughs> do you want to do that miscellaneous business? And we should talk about Zach. Yes. And there was one more thing I was thinking that we should. Center school. The what? No. Was there a? Center school. No, you don't center school. Oh, center school. Um, so I'm not sure when we're going to do that, I guess, as I'm looking at this, unless anybody has any appetite for meeting at 7, from 7 to 7.30 on either of the October meeting, which I think would, especially for, oh, we're also inviting um, the folks back from Pond Street, so we do need to have a process in place. I'm wondering since we have three meetings in October, if we should just. Do we have three meetings in October? Time frame. And then I'm to seven if we can get done earlier, because it is, <laughs> it's getting, it's pretty late. Uh, I'm trying to think. Hmm. Well, that's the thing. If we're just going to be here longer, <laughs> and and stick with 7 30. Yeah, we need a process in, in the meantime, though, too. Yes. Um, When's our, what's our third meeting in October? That's October 29th. And well, that is just an unhappy situation for me to come to terms with late in the game here. You guys are all way ahead of me. I'm not, okay. 115.29. Okay. Really? No 22nd? So what? No 22nd? I thought the 22nd was one of the dates. So um, when do we want to talk about those three things? Just I'm, I'm just asking the board. Do you want to wait until the 29th? Doesn't. So the 15th is... Um, July is good. <laughs> well, how about we save that time for, the, for 9.30 on the 15th, okay? So that is um, business. That would be Zach. And website and walls. But we do have to see the gentleman about the wall earlier than that. One question on the wall. I mean, is it a, might it be appropriate for him to respond in writing if we have some specific questions to ask him? Um, Maybe that's better in person. I just yeah, it would be hard to correspond. Yeah. So how about, so we, why don't we ask him if he can come at 7.30? on the first and at least um, have a conversation because our first public hear uh, the hearing is 745. That's a capital idea. Okay. All right, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor, aye. 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 No. no.